National security experts are racing to fix a hack on Microsoft's on-premise security servers. Microsoft revealed that a Chinese state-backed hacker group called HAFNIAUM exploited vulnerabilities in the email software in the United States. January 5th, 2021. An employee at a security test company, DEFCOR, reported a flaw to Microsoft in their email security software. The flaw was so massive that the tester boasted on Twitter that it was the most serious security vulnerability he's ever come across. The exact details of the exploit were kept secret, yet the next day on January 6th, an unknown exploit was being used against Microsoft's email security servers exchange. It turns out that a component of a massively popular software was vulnerable to an attack that could let hackers install a backdoor into email servers using Exchange. Microsoft Exchange is used by almost every business globally, and it is basically the email gateway within an organization's network. It is responsible for sending and receiving all emails, processing calendar invitations, and more. This means that anyone who can get their hands on the Exchange server can do everything from reading and stealing all of their emails, but they can also use it as an entry point into the victim's entire internal network. So, if an unknown group of hackers have the ability to steal information from almost every business around the world and place back doors in their network, then clearly Microsoft Exchange has a very big problem. For the next month, security researchers analyzed and investigated cyber attacks involving Chinese backdoors being dropped into Exchange servers. Since the attack was a zero-day attack, there was little information released to the public and no way to defend against it. Zero-day attacks is a broad term that refers to vulnerabilities where developers have only just learned of the flaw, which means they have zero days to fix it. Microsoft was racing to fix the exchange flaw that first reported to them, but they were running out of time. Microsoft announced they would release security updates to exchange during their routine patching schedule, which occurs on the second Tuesday of every month. In this case, it was March 9th, 54 days after the initial vulnerability was reported. But Hafnium, the Chinese hackers behind the attacks, weren't too excited about this. Their earlier secretive but targeted attacks in the last month suddenly turned global. On February 26, Hafnium accelerated the backdooring of vulnerable servers by scanning the entire internet at once. We're talking thousands of servers compromised per hour all around the world. Their zero-day exploit was now public. This brought worldwide attention to their attacks. And seven days later, 30,000 organizations in the US and hundreds of thousands worldwide now had backdoors installed. A week earlier than previously planned, Microsoft released updates to plug the zero-day vulnerabilities in exchange due to the attacks happening across the entire internet, but it was too late. The back doors meant that it didn't matter anymore whether the exchange vulnerability would be fixed or not. Hafnium no longer needed to exploit the servers. They could simply connect to the web shell they initially dropped and they would have instant access to the internal network. The web shell allowed a hacker on their local computer to initiate a connection to the infected server. It's an easy to use password protected hacking tool that can be accessed over the internet from any browser. A hacker's primary goal is to obtain a shell as they are used as a mean of maintaining persistent access to a compromised system, even after other malware has been removed. Now that Hafnium had successfully infected hundreds of thousands of servers, they could remotely watch and control the internal network of the compromised organizations. They also performed additional attacks, 
such as harvesting the credentials of all their employees, creating themselves user accounts, stealing copies of the company's user data, and laterally moving around the network. The lateral movement was one of the most dangerous aspects of their attacks. They used the infected exchange server to spread to other machines within the network and to search for administrators' computers or servers. This is where they could begin the next phase of their attacks, or stage two. Security experts around the globe were biting their nails waiting for what was to come. They were filled with a mix of dread and anticipation it was only a matter of time before Hafnium entered through the back doors they placed on hacked servers and began the real attacks. Hafnium had access to absolutely everything. Firstly, they learned about how their victims operated by reading all of their internal email communications and they even impersonated themselves as high-ranking employees. Remember, Hafnium is backed by the Chinese government. Because of this, they had a special target in mind. This was the government and military sector. A quarter of Hafnium's attacks involved siphoning critical information from here so they could gain political and military advantages. Secondly, they could also just encrypt the entire network of organizations and hold them at ransom. If their target was not worth the effort of siphoning out all of their secrets, they simply locked all of their files and requested cryptocurrency for a key to unlock it, which could have cost tens of millions of dollars. But Hafnium knew their free reign wasn't going to be long-lived. As the chaos unraveled and the inner workings of the vulnerabilities came to life, other hackers wanted to join in on their fun. By March 9th, a week after the security update was released by Microsoft to fix the vulnerability, 100,000 of the 400,000 exchange servers around the world remain unpatched. By this point, 10 other cybercrime and espionage groups similar to Hafnium were observed exploiting the newly exposed exchange flaws for their own purposes. It became a race for hackers to do as much damage as they could before other hacking groups encrypted the network or cybersecurity teams removed their back doors. There was no reason why hackers who had access to a zero day wouldn't simply press a button and exploit every possible target across the entire internet. It was like the Wild West, where anything goes. Hold on a minute. How did the exact vulnerability DevCore shared with Microsoft end up being exploited publicly prior to Microsoft issuing its updates? There was now a bounty on Hafnium's head. No one knew who they were, and no one knew how they managed to get access to this critical security flaw. By March 12th, just a few days after the patch was released, Microsoft began their investigation. They wanted revenge against the hackers that caused them millions of dollars of damages and many sleepless nights. But Hafnium did not leave behind much of a trail. There was only one small lead that they could really follow. Microsoft shared concept attack code privately to antivirus and other cybersecurity firms so that their partners could better protect their customers once Microsoft addressed the vulnerability. But it appeared that some of the tools used in connected attacks starting a week later were almost identical to the attack code they privately shared. One of the 80 partners in their private group had inadvertently or intentionally leaked the information. Eyes were on the anti-malware partner in China since the exploit was dropping Chinese web shells onto infected servers. It actually wasn't the first time a Chinese partner had been caught leaking vulnerabilities, yet there was no solid proof to solidify the claims. The investigations led Microsoft to reveal the identity of the hackers as Hafnium. The same hackers who historically targeted entities in the United States for the purpose of exfiltrating information for espionage activities. 
the U.S. government formally recognized Hafnium as the hackers behind the reckless and dangerous attacks. But the Chinese government responded by denying involvement, calling the accusations groundless. This is despite the fact that deep investigations tied Hafnium's operation closely to the Chinese hacking group APT-40 and APT-31, which are backed by the Civilian Intelligence, Security and Secret Police Agency of China, the Ministry of State Security. But let's save analysis of these groups for another video. Years after the attack, it's likely that secret backdoors into companies are still being accessed, and sensitive information stolen has been used to benefit hackers or even governments for malicious intent. To give you an understanding into what information they're after, groups associated to Hafnium have been observed hacking naval and marine time companies, stealing intellectual property in order to boost China's warship design and construction efforts. The group is still active today, stealing sensitive information from countries across the world, but they are tracked publicly using different names like Bronze Mohawk, Fever Dream, Green Cash, and many more. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, let us know what you think about the Hafnium group. Are you ready to enter the dark and dangerous world of hacking? Do you want to know who are the most notorious and terrifying hackers in the world? The ones who have caused online chaos, stolen billions of dollars, and even brought down entire governments? Brace yourself for a journey into the chilling world of cybercrime and discover the true power and terror of these insane hackers. Make sure to stick around until the very end. This video might just shock you. Double Dragon, who are also known as APT-41. Barium, Winty, Wicked Panda, Wicked Spider, TG-2633. Bronze Atlas, Red Kelpie, or Blackfly, is a hacking organization with ties to the Chinese Ministry of State Security. They have hacked the computers of hundreds of companies and organizations around the world to collect identities, hijack systems for ransom, and remotely use thousands of computers to mine for cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin and Ethereum. There is high confidence that the group is sponsored by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, while conducting operations for financial gain. The group gets their nickname, Double Dragon, as it expresses the duality of their operations. They engage in espionage, siphoning top-secret government information, as well as hacking for individual financial gain. What makes these hackers so terrifying is their links to the Chinese government. Double Dragon uses sophisticated cyber espionage malware, exclusively owned by the Chinese government to gain information that benefits national interest. The group specifically targets the technology industry to benefit the Chinese interest in developing high-tech instruments domestically. Other hacking campaigns attributed to Double Dragon demonstrates that the group's purpose is to obtain information before major political and financial events. Five men who were identified by the U.S. government as the core members of the organization have been placed on the FBI's Cyber Most Wanted group. All five of these members remain at large, and their hacking operations continue to wreak havoc across major corporate and government industries. It is unlikely they will ever be caught. Helix Kitten also known as APT-34 Oil Rig IR, N2 or Cobalt Gypsy, is an Iranian-based adversary group working on behalf of the Iranian government. The group conducts most of its operations in the Middle East, targeting financial, energy, chemical, telecom and other industries. Not only this, but they attack other government institutions. Specifically, they attack countries that are seen by Iran as competitors to its regional dominance. Notable countries such as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirate, UAE. A trait of Helix Kitten is their specific attacks on the telecommunication industry. These attacks allow the hackers to collect bulk communications data, and it is thought that Iran can leverage this in additional intelligence and espionage activities. 
Since 2014, the group is known to be using Microsoft Excel macros, PowerShell-based exploits, and social engineering to gain access to its targets. They use phishing emails to deliver weaponized Microsoft Excel documents, which when executed, infects the target system with customized malware. These hackers are on the offense. They have been active since 2014, and their primary goal is to diminish the capabilities of other regional powers and to benefit the economic and geopolitical interests of the state of Iran. Unfortunately for Helix Kitten, rival hackers expose the cyber espionage group's operations with details about the inner workings of their infrastructure, hacking tools, members, and victims. Of course, this does not stop the group, as a recent campaign was recently detected, targeting organizations in the Middle East for cyber espionage in December 2022. Cozy Bear, also known as APT-29 Nobelium Dark Halo or Stella Particle, is a Russian APT group that is associated with multiple intelligence agencies of Russia. They are responsible for cyber attacks on U.S. sovereign national data, the Pentagon, the Norwegian government, and cybersecurity organizations. The Cozy Bear Threat Group is generally considered a proxy for Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, SVR, and has been active since 2008. They are well-resourced, highly dedicated, and structured. Their ability to operate without being detected in compromised networks is frightening at the very least. Cozy Bear's primary goal is to spy and gather intelligence on nations and multinational organizations. They dismantle or disrupt networks and infrastructure occasionally, but most of its operations appear to be gathering intelligence for Russia. Cozy Bear are able to infect systems using a malware backdoor and a malware dropper. A malware dropper is a type of malicious software that is designed to deliver and install additional malware onto a victim's computer or device. Cozy Bear uses droppers to bypass endpoint detection systems, and it is typical for their dropper to lay dormant in a system for an extended period of time. They hide their droppers within seemingly harmless programs or file, such as an email attachment or a downloaded document. The second stage malware that is gathered through the dropper is usually a backdoor and provides a hidden and unauthorized way for Cozy Bear to gain access to their victim's computer or network. This allows these terrifying hackers to access infected computers whenever they like, to siphon data back to Russia's intelligence service. Their backdoors can be very difficult to detect and remove. You might have one in your computer right now, but I assure you that you wouldn't know about it. Lazarus Group, also known as APT-38, Zinc, Hidden Cobra and North Korea's sole profitable enterprise, is a North Korean-backed hacking group that conducts malicious cyber activity to collect intelligence, conduct attacks, and generate revenue. The North Korean group allegedly uses the money stolen to fund ballistic missiles and weapons of mass destruction. Lazarus Group has been operating anonymously since 2009, using various tactics such as using false identities, proxy servers, and encrypted communication channels. Without a doubt, the Pyongyang regime has invested significant resources in the group's cyber warfare capabilities. They were the hackers behind one of the world's most famous cyber attack, the WannaCry ransomware attack. This attack is just one of many, as they are also responsible for the Sony breach in 2014, the 2016 Bangladesh Bank cyber heist, pharmaceutical company attacks in late 2021, and ongoing cryptocurrency attacks. North Korea is setting records for their ballistic missile testing, while their total exports in 2020 totaled $142 million worth of goods. It's not hard to see how their cryptocurrency hacking is likely a sizable chunk of the nation's economy. Lazarus Group are terrifying yet untargetable. Due to their members most likely residing in North Korea, these hackers have been launching the worst cyber attacks in history against the entire world. And unfortunately, there is nothing stopping them. Investigations show their group may consist of over 3,000 members, who are elite in areas such as programming, network security, and cryptography. Fancy Bear, also known as APT-28, Pawnstorm, Sednit, Strontium, and Sophacy, 
is widely believed to be a threat group that has been attributed to the Main Intelligence Department, or GRU, Russia's premier military intelligence service. This group compromised the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Democratic National Committee, and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee in 2016 in an attempt to interfere with the U.S. presidential election. APT-28 has been active since at least 2004. Fancy Bear has a long history of committing sophisticated phishing attacks against high-value targets in the news media, dissident movements, the defense industry, and foreign political parties. Not only this, but they were responsible for the 2017 NotPetya malware attack, which was a highly destructive malware that destroyed the master boot record of infected computers, making them unable to start, and it caused significant financial losses for many organizations. Fancy Bear is just one of the many Russia-based adversaries. Cozy Bear, Venomous Bear, and Voodoo Bear are all different groups that serves Russia's military intelligence service. They are vicious and have been testing various types of cyber weaponry for many years. In 2015, they hacked and took total control over the French television network, overriding the broadcast programming of the channels for over three hours. This attack was extremely sophisticated as they spent three months in the network once infected, gathering information on how the television network operated. They constructed malicious software specific to their attack to destroy and corrupt hardware that was used for the TV station's operations to make restoring services almost impossible. This attack proves that this hacking group can accomplish anything. They are constantly active and might even be performing their next greatest cyber attack this very moment. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. I want you to imagine the worst storm you've ever been in. The loud pouring rain, the howling winds, and the explosive thunder. Now, replace the violent storm with the internet traffic. That's exactly what hackers are capable of doing, and each day the storm they create grows stronger and becomes more ferocious. In the heart of cyber warfare, a single weapon can paralyze even the strongest systems and services. If you want to know what that weapon is, then sit back and don't go anywhere, as we will explore just how powerful it can get. First, let's talk about what a botnet really is. A botnet is a network of compromised computers or devices that are under the control of a hacker, or also known as the botmaster. These hacked machines are commonly referred to as bots, or zombies. Not only can the hacker monitor and steal everything from the machine, they can also remotely command the bots to perform various tasks, such as launching distributed denial-of-service DDoS attacks, sending spam emails, or distributing malware further to grow their botnet. So just how big can a botnet get? There are tens of thousands of botnets, with many of them being created or destroyed every day. The size can vary drastically, However, there are some impressively large botnets in history and in current existence. The Mirai botnet, which approximately had over 600,000 devices infected, managed to grow large and fast as it attacked public-facing devices like unsecured smart cameras, network routers, or home security systems. It accomplished this by scanning the entire internet and attempting to log into the device using default settings. It didn't take long for Mirai to infect hundreds of thousands of devices in countries worldwide and gain significant power. There are some botnets out there that have a lot more infected devices. The Zeus botnet, once named America's most wanted botnet, accounted for 90% of all online bank fraud incidents globally. Once a machine gets infected, Zeus immediately steals information from web browsers and within storage such as banking or financial information, and stored account credentials, respectively. All stolen data can be siphoned off to the hacker's server. However, any system infected with Zeus also becomes a zombie in its botnet. At its peak, Zeus had over 13 million devices infected globally. It can be unimaginable to think how some hackers can have this many infected computers at their fingertips and the amount of power this gives them. Similarly to Zeus, there is a botnet out there that goes by the name of Emotet. It is one of the most professional and long-lasting cybercrime botnets out there. 
It was first discovered as a banking trojan in 2014, which then evolved into the go-to solution for cyber criminals all over the world. The Emotet infrastructure essentially acted as an entry point for millions of computer systems around the globe. Once a device is infected and unauthorized access was established, the devices are collected and auctioned to other top-level criminal groups. This allows any cyber criminal to commit further illicit activities, such as data theft and extortion through ransomware, simply by paying for the initial access. Despite being taken down in 2021 by law enforcement, Emotet has resurged in 2022 and continues to deploy additional types of sophisticated malware. Analysis of Emotet activity after their reappearance shows that in only two months, the botnet was able to grow powerful enough to send 10 times the amount of spam emails through the entire internet. It grows stronger every day. The amount of devices the botnet has infected does not necessarily determine the power of the botnet I introduce you to the Mantis botnet, and be warned it is a monster. The American tech giant and DDoS mitigation company Cloudflare first reported the existence of this botnet as it mitigated attacks on its customers. They reported that at the peak of an attack, Mantis was capable of sending a brain melting 26 million requests per second. What's even crazier is that the attack came from only 5,000 devices. The reason the botnet is so powerful is that Mantis leverages powerful, hijacked virtual machines and servers so each bot has substantial computational resources. As a result, the botnet does not need to be that large. The Mantis botnet is described as the most powerful botnet to date, and it gets its name from the Mantis shrimp. Although small in size at approximately 10 centimeters in length, it possesses astonishing power. Their thumb splitter claws are formidable weapons, capable of inflicting serious damage on prey or enemies. With incredible speed and force, these tiny crustaceans can strike at a staggering 152 kilograms worth of force, with their claws reaching speeds of 83 kilometers per hour from a stationary position. In the case of the Mantis botnet, its infected yet powerful devices flood the website with web requests in order to overwhelm the target. Anything hit by this botnet without any sufficient DDoS mitigation would succumb rather quickly. Even more impressively, the botnet uses encrypted HTTPS requests rather than unsecured HTTP requests. Generating 26 million web requests is hard enough to do without the extra overhead of establishing a secure connection. But Mantis can do it using an encrypted communication protocol. It's worth noting this, as to accomplish such a feat, it requires significantly greater computational resources. Each request out of the 26 million would need to establish a secure TLS encrypted connection. It really highlights the unique strength behind this botnet. To put things into comparison on how strong this botnet really is, we can compare it to the Zeus botnet. If we scale the Mantis botnet of 5,000 up to the size of the Zeus botnet, it would be 2,600 times more powerful. At this size, Mantis could send approximately 67 billion requests per second, which is so far beyond what is considered a high load for a web server. Luckily, due to the difficulties of a hacker gaining control of this many extremely powerful virtual machines and servers, we probably won't see this, at least not yet. Just a quick reminder that only 4.4% of you are subscribed. If you're enjoying the video so far, show some love by liking and subscribing. It helps our channel to grow so we can keep creating videos for you to enjoy. Let us know in the comments what content you'd love to see next. By now you must be wondering, who is behind some of the largest botnets in the world? Well, would you believe me if I said they are typically operated by cyber teams under a nation state or nation state sponsored groups? They go by the name of Advanced Persistent Threats APTs, and are well funded and elite hackers. Their aim is to infiltrate and remain undetected within targeted systems for extended periods, typically to steal sensitive information, conduct espionage, or disrupt critical operations for political or economic reasons. Botnets play a crucial role in the execution of APTs by providing a powerful and distributed infrastructure for various stages of their attacks. For example, the Iranian threat group APT-33, also known as Holmium, or Elfin, is believed to operate out of the geographic boundaries of the Islamic Republic of Iran, 
and has been linked to attacks on targets in the Middle East, Europe, and the United States. It has carried out sophisticated attacks since at least 2013, mainly against the aviation and energy sectors. The hackers use their botnet to hit a range of targets while obscuring their real behavior by dispersing their attack through multiple infected machines. It is believed their botnets, each comprising a small group of up to a dozen infected computers, are also used to gain persistence within the networks of infected targets and are primarily used to download and execute additional malware, allowing them to further spread into a network. APT33's botnet is nothing compared to what's next. The most secretive and potentially the craziest botnet in existence is nicknamed the Great Cannon of China. This tool, employed by the Chinese government, is utilized to carry out distributed denial-of-service attacks on websites, while also being capable of monitoring web traffic and distributing malware. Its operation involves executing a man-in-the-middle attack on the country's gigantic volume of web traffic by injecting specific code into end-users' web browsers. This is only possible as China controls the country's internet backbone and has a privileged position on the country's network. Since they control the network, they can intercept legitimate traffic and weaponize it. As a result, web browsers all throughout China can be directed at targets and flooded with enormous amounts of traffic, leading to server overload and disruption. In late March 2015, the Great Cannon's initial targets were websites hosting censorship-evading tools. Notably, it directed its firepower towards GitHub, a web-based code hosting service, and Great Fire, a service dedicated to monitoring blocked websites in China. The 2015 GitHub attack caused severe political problems for China, including the United States Department of State viewing it as an attack against U.S. infrastructure. The last recorded use of the Great Cannon was in December 2019, and it was used in an attempt to take down the Hong Kong-based LIHKG online forum, which is often referred to as the Hong Kong version of Reddit. The record for the most powerful DDoS attacks continues to be broken, and the time it takes to break the record is only shortening. These botnets are growing in strength and in power at an exponential rate. It's only a matter of time before we witness one wipe out an entire country's network. They are a power that is not to be reckoned with, and in terms of cyber warfare, they can be the greatest weapon. Let's just pray that DDoS mitigation services can keep up, or that you are not in their line of sight. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. A cyber gang has just hacked the largest online casino in the world. $41 million vanished from their cryptocurrency wallets instantly which left Stake scrambling for answers, and security researchers digging for clues into how this all happened. It wasn't just an ordinary cyber gang, however. It was Lazarus Group, the most prolific gang originating from an unfamiliar place, North Korea. So, how did Lazarus Group manage to hack a cryptocurrency casino that makes 2.5 billion in revenue? For an online casino, Cybersecurity would have to be, or should be, their number one priority. Let's take a deep dive into the world of online casinos, cryptocurrency heists, and the attackers behind it. You will want to remember their name, as I assure you it's not their biggest cyber attack, nor will it be their last. The Stake Online Casino is a big target for hackers. The reason is pretty simple. Wherever the money goes, hackers follow. For a cyber criminal to obtain even just a small piece of the buy, the reward is usually a significant amount of money. The stake has many celebrity ambassadors, most notably the famous rapper Drake, and is also partnered with the UFC, Everton Football Club, and Formula One team Alfa Romeo. It's safe to say that stake can throw around a ridiculous amount of money on sponsorships and advertisements. However, all of this does not go unnoticed. Cyber criminals have had a long history of hacking cryptocurrency firms, wallets, exchanges or even casinos. If you keep yourself updated within the world of cryptocurrency, you probably know that cyber attacks here are far too common. Yet, 
There is one gang who dominates the cryptocurrency threat landscape. Lazarus Group, the criminal organization based out of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, aka North Korea, are commonly referred to as North Korea's sole profitable enterprise. They conduct malicious cyber activity to collect intelligence, conduct attacks, and allegedly use the money they steal to fund ballistic missiles and weapons of mass destruction. Now it makes more sense why Lazarus Group has gone all in on crypto attacks. Most likely, this is the easiest way for them to ensure they can generate large revenue for their country and military. Straight up stealing the online currency works better than begging companies or organizations for ransom payments. I'm not saying that they still don't attack normal businesses globally, however they have been responsible for primarily all major cyber heists in the last few years. So, did the biggest crypto casino get hacked by the biggest crypto hackers? Well, I'm sure you can figure out where this is going. In the early hours of a Tuesday morning, a blockchain security company noticed 16 million US dollars sent from state's crypto wallets to unknown addresses. Since this was out of the ordinary, they flocked to X, formerly Twitter, to notify followers. The transactions were suspicious since the behavior followed typical patterns of stolen funds. The USDC, USDT, DAI, and ETH tokens received by the hackers were all converted into ETH and distributed through multiple addresses in the Ethereum network. Some people speculated it might have been an insider, or that there was nothing to worry about. However, as the news started to spread, another, yet larger transaction rocked Stake's hot wallets. Other blockchain analysts jumped in with their own findings. The second transaction involved Stake's Binance smart contracts and Polygon funds being sent in similar suspicious fashion. It was a further 25 million US dollars. A user on X joked that Drake was just withdrawing his profits from the gambling website. However, another user posted a picture of Kim Jong-un smoking a cigarette as a sly remark to Lazarus Group's success. A few hours later on the same morning, the state confirmed the worst. Four hours later, all services were resumed and back to normal, yet Stake was still missing over 41 million US dollars. The rumors of Lazarus Group's involvement were spreading over the internet, however nothing was confirmed. That was until two days later, when the FBI confirmed that North Korean backed hackers were the culprit, the thieves who moved the stolen funds associated with Stake's cryptocurrency hot wallets into multiple virtual currency addresses. Stake stayed quiet after their mysterious posts on X. However, after the FBI announcement, the CEO of Stake joined a live stream, asking the streamer Aiden Ross if he can go to North Korea to get his money back. Actually, go like try to get these funds back for us. Like, I, I'm not even joking. Like, I think you could actually like resolve this. Once. Dude, bro, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> yeah, look, it's probably best to book a one way ticket. It's not fully understood how Lazarus Group was able to compromise Stake's crypto wallets. However, there are some possibilities. Earlier this year in July 2023, popular code hosting platform GitHub issued a warning that Lazarus Group was creating fake accounts on their platform to target employees of online gambling firms with social engineering and malware. They were creating fake personas and hijacking accounts of legitimate people it's possible that they initiated contact with employees at stake from these accounts. It's known that Lazarus Group would attempt to establish trust with their target. Then, once they got this, the North Korean hackers would invite them to collaborate on a project and download their seemingly legitimate application from GitHub. If the victim executed this, they unknowingly installed malicious packages on their machine the packages contained first stage malware, which could then download and detonate further payloads. This very well could have been their entry point into Stake's operations. It's possible that an internal employee at Stake may have fallen victim to this exact scenario.
Another possibility could be that Stake fell victim to the last pass breach back in November 2022. Hackers stole password vaults containing both encrypted and plain text data from more than 25 million users. There's no evidence to support this claim, but since the breach, a steady trickle of cryptocurrency heists have been taking place. Without a doubt, the Pyongyang regime has invested significant resources into Lazarus Group's cyber warfare capabilities. They were the hackers behind one of the world's most famous cyber attack, the WannaCry ransomware attack. This attack is just one of many, as they are also responsible for the Sony breach in 2014, the 2016 Bangladesh Bank cyber heist, pharmaceutical company attacks in late 2021, and of course, ongoing cryptocurrency attacks. North Korea is setting records for their ballistic missile testing while their total exports in 2020 totaled only 142 million US dollars worth of goods. Yet their cryptocurrency heists over the last several years have totaled over 2 billion USD. It's really not that hard to see how their cryptocurrency hacking is likely a sizable chunk of the nation's economy. Lazarus Group are terrifying, yet untargetable. Due to their members most likely residing in North Korea, these hackers will continue to launch the worst cyber attacks possible against the entire world, and unfortunately there is nothing much stopping them. Their group may consist of over 3,000 members who are elite in areas such as programming, network security and cryptography. So, what does this mean for stake? Well, Considering the amount of money their gambling website profits with their $2.5 billion annual revenue, I doubt the recent heists impacted their operations that much. If you want to work for stake, sharpen your resume because they might have a few new cybersecurity positions open up. Leave a comment down below on what you think Lazarus Group will do next. Their stolen cryptocurrency is tied up and their addresses have been flagged but this hasn't stopped them from laundering a portion of the money already. As always, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to know more about the most vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. We've got a Discord channel too, so if you want to check that out, the link is in the description below. Imagine having complete control over someone's computer, their private files, their most intimate moments. Now, imagine that power falling into the hands of the evilest computer hackers. Well, that's exactly what happened for the last 12 years. That's the story of the world's most popular remote access Trojan netwire. But today we're going to uncover its downfall. We'll reveal how this Trojan virus decimated its victims, and how the FBI took down the mastermind behind this ominous software. Get ready to witness the demise of an underworld empire, and how the FBI cracked the code and brought down the most infamous rat in history. The Netwire Remote Access, Trojan, also known as RAT, is a type of malware that is used by hackers to gain access to and control a victim's computer remotely. Essentially, the rat creates a backdoor into the victim system, allowing the attacker to take over the machine and use it for their own purposes. This can include stealing sensitive information, monitoring the user's activities, watching them through their webcam, listening to them, or even using their computer to launch attacks on others to cover their tracks. Netwire Rat was first marketed on cybercrime forums since 2012 and since then it has become one of the most popular rats in the world. Netwire's reliability and relatively low cost, from 80 to 140 United States dollars, has made it an extremely popular rat on the cybercrime forums for years, and Netwire infections consistently rank among the top 10 most active rats in use. One reason for its popularity 
is its ease of use. People with little technical knowledge can deploy the rat and start controlling machines within minutes, so long as they can detonate the malware on their target's machine. Additionally, the rat has a range of powerful features that make it particularly effective at taking over and controlling remote systems. These include the ability to hide its activities from antivirus software, to take screenshots of the victim's screen, and to log keystrokes. To spread the netwire rat, hackers typically use a variety of social engineering techniques, such as phishing emails, fake software downloads, or malicious attachments. Once a victim clicks on the infected link or attachment, the rat is installed on their system without their knowledge. The attacker can then take over the machine and start using it for their own purposes. In most cases, the victim may not even be aware that their system has been compromised, as the rat can operate silently in the background without any visible signs of intrusion. Just a quick reminder that if you're enjoying the video so far, show some love by leaving a like, comment and subscribe. It helps our channel to grow so we can keep creating videos for you to enjoy, as only 4.4% of you are subscribed. Netwire has been sold openly on the same website since 2012. The website, worldwiredlabs.com, now features a seizure notice from the U.S. Department of Justice, which says the domain was seized as part of a coordinated law enforcement action taken against the Netwire Remote Access Trojan. It is surprising that this did not happen sooner. Although the malware was advertised as a legitimate program to remotely access devices, the owner of Netwire, who was a Croatian citizen, had clearly been committing a criminal offense against computer systems, programs, and data, described in Article 272, Paragraph 1 of the Criminal Code Republic of Croatia. This is because Netwire does not ask for users' consent, installs quietly with persistence, and is undetectable by antivirus products. So how did this man who ran one of the biggest remote access Trojans in the world get caught? The exact criminal evidence that led to the arrest of the owner is not fully known. However, there are many interesting publicly available records that point towards the administrator of the Netwire website. It is likely that the poor operational security of the administrator was key evidence which led to his arrest. In October 2012, the Netwire domain Worldwired Labs moved to another dedicated server which was home to just one other domain, printschoolmedia.org, also registered in 2012. This video will redact the true records, but let's just say, public records show, johndo at gmail.com. If you're unfamiliar with DNS in short, is the phone book of the internet, and allows internet users to connect to websites using names rather than an internet protocol, IP address. It also stores information about who owns the domain and provides contact details. Anyway, domain name resolution DNS records for the Netwire website showed that the site forwarded incoming email to the address tomaloni at ruggedinbox.com. This email address was linked to an account at a clothing retailer store and had the password 123456XX. This information was obtained through a database leak of the clothing retailer's website. The reverse search of the password revealed that it has been used by over 450 email addresses. Among these email addresses are johndoe at gmail.com and johndoe at yahoo.com. When searching for johndoe at gmail.com on Skype, three results were found. One of these results includes an account named Netwire with the username Dugadox. Another result is associated with a user, you guessed it, John Doe. The handle Dugadox has been commonly linked to Netwire sales and support discussion threads on multiple cybercrime forums over the years. Intelligent Services connects the email address Dugadox at gmail.com to various website registrations including the use of the Dugadox handle on notorious cybercriminal websites, Black Hat World and Hack Forums. 
There's many other publicly available information that links this individual to the Netwire remote access Trojan infrastructure, and it is highly likely that the seemingly small mistakes made over the last 10 years were used in convicting this hacker and bringing down one of the world's most popular remote access Trojan. A quote directly from the FBI assistant director in charge states, the global partnership that led to the arrest in Croatia also removed a popular tool used to hijack computers in order to perpetuate global fraud, data breaches, and network intrusions by threat groups and cybercriminals. It is true that the takedown of Netwire Rat and the arrest of its owner will likely have a significant impact on the cybercrime landscape. With one of the most notorious rats now out of commission, cybercriminals who relied on Netwire for their malicious activities will have to find alternative tools. Unfortunately, they do not have to look far. Netwire was one of the tens of thousands of remote access Trojan tools that cyber criminals can utilize to commit online atrocities. Some of the scariest hackers in the world have used Netwire and other similar rats to infect hundreds of thousands of computers. A direct consequence of hackers using this software is their potential to create impressively large botnets. A botnet is a group of computers which have been infected by malware and have come under the control of a malicious actor. There are botnets being tracked that have over 13 million infected computers and other botnets which can send over 71 million requests per second. That number is truly face melting. Some of the other RATs used by attackers are Dark Comet, which has been around since 2008 and is known for its user-friendly interface, making it popular among novice cyber criminals. There's also Nanocore, NJ Rat, or Poison Ivy that have gained notoriety for being used in high-profile attacks and exhibit stealth capabilities which make it difficult to be detected by traditional antivirus software. Or there is Ghost, which is a rat that has been used in a wide range of cyber attacks, from espionage to financial theft, and has been linked to state-sponsored cyber operations. If you want to know more about state-sponsored cyber attacks and hackers, I suggest you check out other videos on the Hacker Gallery YouTube channel. The downfall of Netwire Rat marks a significant victory in the ongoing battle against cybercrime. Join us as we explore the latest developments in cybersecurity and stay ahead of the curve in the fight against cyber threats. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. Crime is dangerous business. When cyber criminals make mistakes, usually this results in their IP address being leaked, their internal network compromised, or their identity may even be revealed. The hacker, wanted by authorities, may flee and live their fugitive life. If arrested, it would be the end to their criminal operations. However, hackers have more than the law enforcement to worry about. Rival cybercriminal gangs, competing to take control over the cybercriminal industry, are also a threat, especially when they are financially motivated. It's no different to gangs in real life, fighting for control over territory, money, or respect. After all, these cybercriminal gangs will do anything to stay on top of the game, even if it means turning physical. Cybercrime can range from phishing, ransomware, and denial of services attacks, all the way to cyber extortion and cyber espionage. However, one particular attack, called SIM swapping, is notorious for its aggression and devastation. SIM swapping blurs the line between cybercrime with real life crime as these cyber criminals target one another with physical violence when they don't hold their end of the deal. It's not like they can go to law enforcement or settle it in court. You may be thinking, what is SIM swapping? Well, you will be familiar with the SIM card you have in your mobile device that connects you with your cellular provider. Legitimate customers can request new SIM cards in case their phone was lost or destroyed. 
Attackers exploit this service by fraudulently swapping a victim's mobile service to a SIM card that they physically own with the intention of hijacking important text messages such as one-time passwords or two-factor authentication codes. Attackers will use this information to access victims' accounts, usually bank accounts, cryptocurrency exchanges, or any services which lead to siphoning money or important information. According to the FBI, $68 million was stolen in 2021 in the United States alone, and it is one of the fastest growing forms of fraud across the world. It's easy to see why cyber criminals will go to the furthest extent to operate. Twitter founder, Jack Dorsey, unfortunately fell victim to this attack in 2019 when hackers somehow gained access to his Twitter account. If that isn't ironic, then who knows what is. Regardless, the mischievous hackers blasted a stream of offensive messages while also promoting their Discord channel to the 4.2 million followers he had at the time. This seems like an impossible feat, however, the hackers utilized Twitter's text-to-tweet service, which pairs the account holders mobile to their account, to flood his Twitter with unauthorized messages. They did this by tricking Jack Dorsey's mobile carrier to swap his SIM card with one they own, gaining full ownership of his mobile number. The hackers, who go by Chuckling Squad, were notorious for their string of attacks on online influencers. Chucking Squad has successfully hacked celebrities, such as Mariah Carey and Jason Derulo, to name a few. Although these hackers caused a lot of mayhem on Twitter that day, the damage was limited, as their Twitter rampage lasted 15 minutes. Of course, the possibilities with these attacks are endless and often lead to massive financial losses for their victims. They can also be used for blackmail and extortion. However, the consequences and damages caused by other SIM swap gangs recently blow this out of the water. In late 2022, a teenager in Florida who was a member of cyber criminal group that specializes in cryptocurrency thefts, specifically SIM swapping, was beaten and kidnapped by a rival cybercrime gang. Familiarly to real-life organized crime, or funnily enough, a ransomware virus, the attackers held the teenager hostage, videotaping him while having him at gunpoint, and forcing him to plead for a $200,000 ransom for his release. The footage, which circulated through underground, Social media channels, dedicated to SIM swapping, shows how violent these cybercriminal gangs can be. The teenager, nicknamed Foreshadow, was targeted by a rival SIM swapper all the way from Australia, as he deceived profits to him from a previous SIM swapping attack. Attacks like these are becoming increasingly more common. It's essentially another form of swatting and has turned deadly in many instances. Cybercriminals are going too far by using coercion and intimidation tactics to beat their rival cybercriminal competition. At 2 a.m. on the 2nd of January 2022, two men a part of an online cybercriminal group were paid to fire multiple gunshots into a house in Pennsylvania. Similar to the prior attack mentioned, these men recorded the shooting as proof, posting the video to intimidate their rival, cybercriminal gang. These physical attacks, facilitated by cyber gangs, have recently come to light, being dubbed violence as a service. These predominantly young cyber criminals and their gangs, having made millions of dollars from their victims through SIM swapping attacks. They leverage their communities through Telegram or Discord to pay someone to carry out a physical attack. These attacks consist of shootings, firebombs, bricking, slashing tires, or anything that could terrorize their victim. The price for these attacks can vary drastically, however, some offerings posted online had up to $50,000 in cryptocurrency for completing the activity. Screenshots taken from Telegram hosting groups show the following. If you live near Edmonton, Canada, direct message me. Need someone bricked, reads Telegram message on May 31, 2022. Again, here is another message from one of these groups, 
that show how far these cyber criminals are willing to go. If you live beep Lakewood, California, direct message beep. Paying 3K to slash the tires. On February 24, 2022, the same day, reads, if you live near here and can brick them, DM beep Richland, Washington. If you live near here and can brick them to beep Richland, Washington. Alongside with these offerings are the videos recorded by the people who carry out the physical attacks. As previously mentioned, this censored video shows two men lighting a homemade Molotov cocktail, smashing a window, and attempting to throw it inside the house. Luckily, they miss. However, the video still shows how these criminals caused significant damage and followed through with the attack. The other video shows a man firing several bullets at a residence, then screaming a name to claim responsibility for the attack. There is a blurred line between the hacker's criminal online activity and reality. Without ever leaving their computer, they can carry out vicious physical attacks on their targets and never bear the real-life consequences this can have. Like swatting attacks, an unintended person may be harmed, even fatally, by these events. This happened, in 2017, over a dispute in the video game, Call of Duty, World War II. An argument ensued online, where the intended victim gave a false address to his attackers. After initiating the fraudulent call to law enforcement, police responded to an address in the state of Kansas, in the United States. As an innocent man exited his house, police officers fatally shot him. The police responded in this way, as the fraudulent phone call indicated that the intended victim was holding family members hostage, had fatally shot his father, and was going to set the house on fire. Legal battles are still being held in regard to this event, and the consequences are far from over. Luckily though, the cyber criminals responsible for organizing these attacks are not always safe. In August, 2022, a 21-year-old man from New Jersey was arrested as part of a federal investigation into these violence-as-a-service attacks. He was just one of many co-conspirators who were at the forefront of these offerings. The world of cyber criminal activity is very broad. Until recently, these attacks were not so common, however, the rise of technology has brought cyber gangs new ways to extort, intimidate, and terrify their victims. These attacks are hard to combat, since they can be privately organized in underground groups. Light is usually only shed upon them, after a tragic event has occurred. Harsher penalties could be given to cyber gangs who participate in these attacks, however, that is of course, if they are even identified. Cyber criminals with great operation security are like ghosts, and to analyze and track their online activity can be strenuous. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable, vicious cyber security attacks, and the most notorious hackers. Want to play with fire? You've probably heard all about the risky consequences of downloading pirated movies or software on the internet. How about downloading video game cheats? You're eager to dominate your opponents and climb the ranks, so you turn to the internet in search of an unfair advantage. Well, I really hope you don't, but if you do, what you find could be much more dangerous than you think. What actually happens when you execute these cheats on your computer might surprise you. If you want to know, stick around until the end of this video as I assure you that what happens will make you think twice. The viruses hidden inside them are waiting to steal your sensitive data and compromise your online security. Before you hit that download button, make sure you know the truth and don't risk it all for a cheap thrill. Redline, a powerful information stealer, is currently being distributed by hackers on YouTube, and they're doing this in a way that might surprise you. 
Videos being uploaded to YouTube show gameplay footage of a sophisticated Valorant game cheat, showing off aimbot, wall hacks, and everything you might expect from a modern day cheat. The description of the video contains a link to an executable file called Cheat Installer, convincing viewers they are one click away from gaining an upper hand. Unfortunately, anyone foolish enough to believe this and running the program are actually downloading the Redline Stealer. Redline is a piece of malicious software and is one of the most widely deployed password-stealing malware infections that snatch sensitive data from infected systems. This frightening malware infiltrates your system, operating silently in the background without your knowledge. Its primary purpose is to steal sensitive information, such as system information, stored web browser passwords and cookies, cryptocurrency wallets, and more. It will steal just about anything from the device. Redline neatly packs all stolen information into a zip archive and exfiltrates the files via a webhook request to a hacker-controlled Discord server. More recent versions of Redline have the ability to upload and download files, execute commands, and periodically send back information about the infected computer. Redline is available on underground forums for sale at around 150 United States dollars, and even has a subscription option, meaning amateur hackers can purchase and deploy it. However, it is still unknown who is behind this YouTube distributed campaign. Embedding viruses inside video game cheats is not uncommon. Video game cheats have long been used to trick people into downloading malware. Adversaries have consistently developed these diverse tactics to distribute their malware, such as disguising it as Windows upgrades, game add-ins, editing software, or free downloads that's, well, too good to be true. This deceptive approach aims to fool users into believing they are installing genuine software, when in reality they are unknowingly introducing malware, such as the Redline Stealer, into their systems. Cheaters in popular multiplayer games are nothing new, and the pandemic saw their numbers rise considerably as more people turned to gaming as a source of entertainment. Hackers try to exploit anything and everything, so it's not hard to see why they're using this knowledge to their advantage. Companies have been trying to fix this growing problem with improved anti-cheat technologies, but their efforts mean nothing when the game's source code is leaked, or when armies of motivated cheat developers are working and innovating all day and all night. I highly suggest you check out our video on the top 10 source code leaks if you want to know more about how hackers exploit source code and the biggest hacks of source code ever. Just a quick reminder that only 4.4% of you are subscribed. If you're enjoying the video so far, show some love by liking and subscribing. It helps our channel to grow so we can keep creating videos for you to enjoy. Let us know in the comments what content you'd love to see next. Valorant is not the only video game targeted by hackers. In March 2020, an individual operating on multiple hacking forums seized the opportunity to promote a supposedly newbie-friendly and effective approach for spreading a remote access trojan. This type of malware grants the hacker complete remote control over the compromised target, which is essentially their dream come true. Unlike complex and sophisticated tactics employed in other remote access trojan distribution methods, this particular strategy relies on exploiting the victim's willingness to disable various security settings on their own systems. Similar to Redline, the videos posted to YouTube with the title Undetected Cheat for COD Warzone demonstrate the cheat's capability and provides detailed instructions for setup. Unfortunately for anyone downloading this, the instructions also mention to run the program as an administrator and to disable antivirus. The threat actor capitalizes on this human vulnerability, taking advantage of the common practice among cheat programs to run with elevated system privileges. Cheat guides often instruct users to disable or uninstall antivirus software, deactivate host firewalls, and even bypass kernel code signing requirements. Upon executing the cheat, it installs a .NET application that can download and execute arbitrary executables. Unless already disabled, user account control, also known as UAC, will prompt the user to agree to allow the executables to run with administrative privileges. Ultimately, the requirements for a legitimate cheat to function are strikingly similar to those necessary for most malware tools to effectively operate. It demands to bypass or deactivate system protections while elevating privileges to ensure the cheat program runs properly and that it's undetectable. Although this method may appear straightforward, 
It primarily relies on wannabe cheaters to willingly compromise their own machine and dismiss warnings regarding execution of potentially harmful software. Although common, promoting video game cheats on YouTube that are riddled with malware is clever. Some of these viruses are a little more sophisticated than others, though. In 2022, a different campaign claiming to offer ways to hack and cheat at several popular games such as DayZ, Forza Horizon 5, and Dying Light 2 had a unique feature. Among with downloading Redline and stealing all sensitive information, the attack's most interesting ability was that it could self-propagate. The malware was engineered to repost the same cheat videos on the victim's YouTube account to spread the attack again. It did this by extracting internet cookies from the victim's browser to gain access to the victim's YouTube account. Then, a pair of other programs will fetch and repost videos to the victim's account to violently spread the attack to more users. Due to the video game industry being worth approximately $220 billion in 2023, it's not hard to see why gamers are one of the most popular groups targeted by cyber criminals. Statistics show that over 3 billion people play video games worldwide. 77% of these people are likely to walk away from an online game if they feel that other players are using video game cheats. If hackers can target the small percentage of users who are looking to seek revenge, then this opens up hundreds of thousands of potential victims and millions of devices to be infected. I guess some may debate whether anyone looking to download cheats deserved it or not. So the next time you're playing Valorant, Warzone, or really any video game out there, and you want to dominate your opponents, don't download those hacks. You might just be installing one of the most powerful information stealers out there. Play consistently, improve your skills, your mentality, and don't get tilted. All it takes is one mistake, one misjudgment, for your online accounts and information to be siphoned. Don't trust any suspicious software, and please, stay safe out there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. The shadows of the internet have always harbored the most nefarious activities, and Genesis Market was no exception. The marketplace, once a thriving underground haven for illegal activities, has fallen. This elusive, invite-only cybercrime store provided a platform for hackers to buy and sell access to hacked computers and high-value accounts. However, the FBI has shattered that veil of secrecy, performing one of the biggest cyber takedowns in recent times, what ultimately led to the downfall of this thriving marketplace. Stick around until the end if you want to know the true story of Genesis Market and how this hacker's playground met its demise. Genesis Market was a prominent online marketplace that operated on the clear and dark web. Unlike other illegal marketplaces like infamous Silk Road, Genesis was focused on the sale of stolen digital identities such as usernames, passwords, and personal information. This was a cyber criminal's dream. Hackers were essentially cloning the web browser session of their victims and selling this to criminals, which was all facilitated through Genesis. Once a criminal had made their purchase, they could gain unauthorized access to the victim's financial and other sensitive accounts and steal every bit of their data in real time. Genesis operated with strict security measures to protect the anonymity of its users and transactions, using Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies for payment. The marketplace had a reputation for being reliable and efficient, with a feedback system that allowed users to rate and review sellers. The website was quite professional, and even had a how-to guide with animated GIFs, teaching people how to use the platform. If you thought this was crazy, then know they also had a full-featured help desk with a ticketing system. The ticketing feature works like a normal tech support portal, where the marketplace operators are prompt in their replies and would assist and respond to any queries in plain English. The invite-only website had over 59,000 registered users and millions of infected computers for purchase. Prices for one single infected bot ranged from cents all the way up to hundreds of dollars, depending on what web sessions had been collected. Sessions from banks, PayPal, or cryptocurrency exchanges were the most sought after and came with a premium price. Just a quick reminder that only 4.4% of you are subscribed. If you're enjoying the video so far, show some love by liking and subscribing. It helps our channel to grow so we can keep creating videos for you to enjoy. Let us know in the comments what content you'd love to see next. You may be familiar with the attack on EA Games in 2021, 
Attackers compromised the network, downloaded source code for games such as FIFA 21, and the source code for the proprietary Frostbite game engine, which is used as the base for many AAA games. Well, it may be a surprise to know that this attack on EA games was facilitated by a bot that was purchased from the Genesis market for $10. The hacker managed to steal approximately 780 gigabytes of data by gaining access to EA's internal Slack group through the Genesis bot. Cybersecurity breaches on this scale have severe consequences. The source code for EA's game engine holds significant value, as other developers may try to copy it, or it could be used to make cheats and hacks for games. It is not hard to see why Genesis Market attracted highly technical hackers and profit-motivated cybercriminals. Due to the association, the website has been on the radar of global law enforcement for some time, as taking over Genesis would unmask thousands of organized cyber criminal gangs around the world. On the 4th of April, several domain names tied to Genesis were seized and taken over by the FBI. This sent shockwaves through the cyber criminal landscape. All of their websites were greeted with the words, This website has been seized. Not only this, but the international law enforcement investigation involving 14 countries launched fierce raids worldwide, which lead to the arrest of 119 cybercriminals. Since all of their infrastructure was seized, this gave the FBI complete control over their website and their databases. They now have the purchase history, as well as all information and activity from Genesis customers. Anyone who used this website, especially buyers and sellers, have been compromised in some way. It is certain that the investigation will unmask hundreds more cyber criminals and even cyber gangs as operations continue. Of course, only the most elite black hat hackers may have a chance of eluding law enforcement. The investigation, nicknamed Operation Cookie Monster, continues to wreak havoc on Genesis Market. Only the clear web domains of Genesis Market were taken down, and currently, only the darknet sites are still active. The dark website for Genesis remains accessible, stable, and functional via the Tor address. However, the reputation and anonymity of the website has been crushed. This means that Genesis market administrators are still at large. However, for them, time is ticking. There's no way of knowing how deeply compromised the Genesis operation was, and still is. But smart cybercriminals will definitely avoid using it. In any case, the downfall of Genesis is not the end. Another criminal marketplace will eventually take its place. What does this mean for the hackers? Well, on the day of the takedown, Britain's National Crime Agency executed 31 warrants, with 24 arrested in the UK. The Australian arm of the investigation, named Operation Zinger, saw the Australian Federal Police and its partners execute 24 search warrants, with 10 arrested in three states. In total, there were 120 arrests, over 200 searches, and close to 100 pieces of preventative activity carried out across the globe. Essentially, its users were either arrested or approached for a serious knock-and-talk conversation. Regardless of the arrests worldwide, it is certain that many perpetrators slipped through the net. It wouldn't take many to form a splinter group of Genesis or a new access brokerage completely, to rise from the ashes of their fallen marketplace once the heat has died down. There have already been rumblings of a new genesis on the dark web, although there are many initial access brokers and marketplaces in the wild that would be thriving from the downfall of genesis. The FBI-led investigation would no doubt have the initial access brokers in their crosshair. These are the financially motivated threat actors that profit through the sale of remote access to corporate networks in underground forums, like Genesis. Since 2020, there has been a huge increase in the sale of network access, likely driven by two factors. The situation of forced remote workforce caused by the global pandemic, and the rise of ransomware attacks. It is likely that law enforcement will turn their heads to other markets like Mega, Blacksprout, Solaris, Kraken, and OMG OMG market. As like Genesis, they are primarily geared towards financial fraud, money laundering, and identity theft. Examples of the specific service offerings marketed on these websites include cash-out services, data dumps, SIM cards, DDoS, two-factor authentication SMS bypass, fake and stolen ID documents, banking malware, and much more. There is always another marketplace ready to take the last one's place, 
Setting up the market and getting the infrastructure is relatively simple. What's more difficult is earning the trust of the cybercrime underground customer base and remaining off of law enforcement's radar. The fall of Genesis Market was not the first of its kind, and it will definitely not be the last. The takedown of Genesis Marketplace is a disturbing reminder of the world of cybercrime that lurks beneath the surface of the internet. It shows that cybercriminals will stop at nothing to exploit innocent victims and make serious profit. It is crucial to remember that personal information is a valuable commodity that must be safeguarded, passwords should be strong and frequently changed, and great care should always be taken on the internet. It does not take much effort for your computer to end up as a bot on Genesis. And for you watching, it just might have. If you want to check whether your data was for sale on Genesis Market, check out the links in the description to the Dutch police. Check your hack website or Troy Hunt's Have I Been Pwned website. The takedown on Genesis highlights the complex and shadowy nature of the internet, where cyber criminals can operate with impunity, selling illegal goods and services to anyone who knows where to look. Hackers with great operation security may never be caught, so it's up to you to keep yourself safe. If you are interested in who the hackers are behind the distribution and sales of bots on Genesis Market, or you would like to know more about the viruses and exploits these hackers use to infect millions of computers around the world, then you're in luck. Check out the scariest hackers in the world on our YouTube channel, or the What Cyber Criminals Don't Want You To Know video. We dive into some of the most notorious criminal cyber gangs and their secrets. You won't want to miss it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. You've heard of bed bugs, right? The bed bug is possibly the world's worst pest. It can live anywhere in your home. This could be in cracks, furniture, or some carpet. They feed off your blood, biting any exposed areas of your skin while you are sleeping. The Russian word klop, which literally translates to bed bug, is an adaptable assistant pest. It makes a lot of sense why these Russian hackers call themselves klop. The ransomware gang is one of, if not the top threats in the cyber landscape right now, and that's for a reason. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how Klopp made themselves $500 million. The Klopp ransomware gang has been in the spotlight in 2023 due to the largest attack yet, and it may even be the largest data theft attack of the century. I'm surprised this isn't gaining as much media attention as it truly deserves it. There are reportedly 255 victims and nearly 18 million individuals that were impacted. It could have even impacted you without you knowing about it. The continued details of who was affected and how badly the fallout will be are still ongoing. As the Klopp ransomware gang have stolen so much data, they are likely in the middle of analyzing each victim, determining what sensitive data was stolen and how valuable it will be. This gives them the opportunity to extort companies and organizations as they see fit. The attack itself was simple. They targeted a software company called Move It, which provides organizations a secure way to transfer files by encrypting the data and sending it over the internet. Organizations can deploy the software, allowing users to log in, upload files, and send to their intended recipients. Since there is a login page, these hackers were able to use one of the oldest tricks in the book for their attack, an SQL injection. When logging in with a username and password, the backend database will verify that they match and return true or false depending on what was input. The SQL injection in the password field allowed hackers to return a true statement regardless of what username or password they entered. This allowed Klopp to gain access into the organization's MoveIt database. Once they had control, they could inject a web shell, which essentially gave them a command prompt where they could just enter any commands on the remote server from their own computer. This backdoor allowed attackers to access the underlying Azure storage account, browse available information, and move out data in large amounts, completely undetected. And, well, this is exactly what they did for over two years. An American risk consulting firm, Kroll, 
said in a report that while the cyber attack was only discovered around late May of 2023, security researchers identified activity indicating that Klopp was experimenting with ways to exploit this particular vulnerability for almost two years. These hackers knew the true extent of their attack, so they didn't make too much noise on any of their compromised systems. The Klopp ransomware gang typically encrypts all files during their attack and requests a payment for the decryption. This is a common ransomware tactic. However, if they went guns blazing on their first victims, then the vulnerability they used could have been detected quickly. Since they didn't encrypt any files, these organizations didn't even know that they had been compromised. Pop was secretly siphoning out files and sending every bit of data the entire time. With this, they didn't need to encrypt anything. The sensitive data that they stole from businesses like social security numbers, driver's licenses, home addresses, or even clinical data is enough to extort their victims for millions of dollars, even months or years after the heist. Klopp is a financially motivated cyber criminal organization. What makes their operations profitable is their data leak site, Klopp Leaks. Any victims who do not pay the ransom will be publicly named and shamed with all of the data posted on their clear and dark websites. It is not uncommon for data to be privately auctioned to other criminal organizations or anonymous users. This gives organizations who had data stolen a massive incentive to pay the ransom due to the nature of the data stolen. If millions of innocent customers associated with a business have personally identifiable information leaked, it can lead to huge fines and loss of company reputation. Although it's not recommended, it's not hard to see why paying the ransom can save organizations from a world of pain. However, these are criminal cyber gangs. What they do with the stolen data, regardless if the ransom was paid or not, will always be unclear. On their dark website, Lop states that its primary motivation is financial gain and that it is not politically motivated in its choice of victims. Text on their Klopp leak site reads the following. Note that we've corrected some grammar. We got a lot of emails about government data. We don't have any government data and anything directly residing on exposed, unprotected, and unencrypted file transfer. We still do the polite thing and delete all. All the media speaking about this will do what they always do, provide little truth in a big lie. We also want to remind all companies that if you put data on the internet and it's not protected, do not blame us for our penetration testing service. We are only financially motivated and do not care anything about politics. They also state they provide video proof in deletion of data. However, I would probably take it with a grain of salt. From the recent move at hack, Klopp is expected to secure around 75 to 100 million from extorting victims from their massive Move It data theft campaign. However, since 2019, Klopp has been actively hacking companies and organizations around the globe. They have profited approximately 500 million United States dollars. So, who is truly behind all of this? It's thought that the Klopp ransomware gang is operated by the threat actors EA505 and FIN11. These are used interchangeably and there is different speculation into whether they are the same group. Like most prolific ransomware gangs, they are a Russian-speaking criminal gang who operate out of countries in the Commonwealth of Independent States. This assessment comes from analysis of their malware, which will abort infection if the device is utilizing the CIS country keyboard layout, which are Russian language systems, and the use of Russian language file metadata. Russia and other countries in the CIS turn a blind eye to these cyber criminal gangs as it's not uncommon for them to be sponsored by their own government. However, Klopp did face some issues in June of 2021 as six members were arrested under the coordination of Interpol, including law enforcement agencies from South Korea, Ukraine, and the United States. They collaborated in a 30-month investigation known as Operation Cyclone to take down Klopp, primarily due to their attacks on Korean and United States computer systems and networks. A total of 21 police raids at various locations including Kiev, resulted in the seizure of computer equipment and approximately $185,000 in cash. However, just one week after the raid's arrest took place, Klopp published a fresh batch of confidential data stolen onto their dark website, Klopp Leaks. Ukrainian authorities were only able to arrest individuals involved in laundering money for the Klopp gang, since its core members are likely out of harm's way in Russia. This further highlights the immunity that these ransomware gangs and operators have. As of 2023, these Klopp core operators are still at large. Money launderers that were caught are easily replaceable. So, 
it's unlikely their operations really were impacted at all by the arrests. The operators who are developing malware and infiltrating computer systems globally may never be caught. On the topic of developing malware, let's take a high level view into how Klopp's malware really works. The Klopp ransomware virus appears to be a descendant or variant of another ransomware, CryptoMix, which also has an association with the threat actor Fin11. In the move attack, data encryption did not take place. However, this virus is very well capable of doing so. Once Klopp encrypts system files using military grade encryption methods known as AES-256, these files are useless. Klopp demands a ransom payment in exchange for providing the decryption code needed to unlock the files. The decryption codes are stored on the hacker's server, meaning the victims will need to contact Klopp if they want to decrypt their files. When a machine is infected with the Klopp ransomware variants, the virus will append a file extension to all the files it encrypts. Typical file extensions include, but are not limited to the following. The group will leave behind ransom notes on infected machines and are labeled as kloppreadme.txt or something similar. Klopp possess unique capabilities that make it particularly dangerous compared to normal malware. It has the ability to spread within the infected network on its own, enabling it to impact multiple systems simultaneously. Additionally, Klopp employs advanced techniques such as using specific digital signatures to evade certain security measures. It goes a step further by erasing the option to restore the computer to a previous state. So unless the systems infected have an offline backup, there is little that can be done. The ransomware gang have proved to be elite in all areas of computer hacking. The criminal syndicate and their powerful ransomware strain are terrorizing companies and organizations globally. With their most recent heist being so successful, do you think the gang will ramp up their operations? Only time will tell. If you want to know more about other insane cyber gangs, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. When thinking about crime, our first thoughts are usually stealing, assault or more severe crimes like murder. However, there is a whole new world of crime in the digital plane, and the impacts of these crimes are worsening as technology becomes more advanced. Cybercrime can cause devastating effects on the planet entirely. Just recently, the cost of fuel rose and shortages of fuel spread across the U.S. due to a cyber attack against the largest fuel pipeline company in the world, and you probably didn't even know about it. Attacks like these happen every day, and to someone who doesn't follow the world of cybercrime, it may not seem like a big deal. Just know in our lifetime we will face a cyber attack so large it may have widespread, long-lasting impacts. It could even threaten the construct of society itself. There's no question that technology has made the world much more connected and convenient than it used to be, but it can also make things incredibly complicated when there are thousands of security breaches in different places at any given moment. Even though we often think of cyber attacks as something recent, they've actually been going on since the early days of the internet. So. What are some of the biggest and most dangerous cyber attack organizations? What do they do? Who would cause such atrocities? Well, I welcome you to the cyber criminal group nicknamed Fancy Bear. Or APT-28. When you hear the word hacker, what comes to mind? For many people, the word conjures up an image of someone sitting in their parents' basement, hidden away from the rest of society coding away at some new website or computer application for fun. You probably wouldn't expect that these highly advanced hackers are actually a part of the government or a division in the military. There is currently a huge cyber war taking place and these hackers, nicknamed APTs, are on the front line. APT is a codename given to cyber criminals who fit the category of A, advanced, P, persistent, and T, threat. APTs are sinister, they are typically a nation-state or state-sponsored group, and they will compromise and hide within networks, remaining undetected for as long as possible, siphoning out important data such as usernames and passwords, which could be yours. 
and in worst cases, top secret government information like aerospace and military information. The repercussions for an unknown threat having this information to the national security of a country is unfathomable. Fancy Bear, or APT-28, is widely believed to be a threat group that has been attributed to the Main Intelligence Department or GRU, Russia's premier military intelligence service. This group has been active since at least 2004 and are responsible for compromising presidential campaigns. A nuclear facility, an organization which prohibits chemical weapons and more. I hope you quickly understand what kind of damage a cyber criminal group are trying to cause by hacking into nuclear facilities. What makes APTs different from normal hackers? Well, there is a large difference between normal computer hackers and government-backed criminal groups like Fancy Bear. You probably receive emails all the time claiming that you've won a trillion dollars, or you get random text messages with suspicious links. I really hope you don't click these. These are usually underground groups who are mainly after financial gain, and for the most part, these criminals steal hundreds of millions of dollars every year. However, advanced persistent threat groups aren't necessarily after financial gain. These groups are usually after national intelligence or even aim to cause as much damage as possible. Fancy Bear are notorious for their 2017 attack which was disguised as ransomware, a virus that spreads through computers and the network, encrypting every file and rendering the computer useless. To get your computer back, you need to pay the attacker's money for a decryption key, which will revert the computer's files back to its original state. This virus, disguised as ransomware, was actually what's called a wiper. This is the most devastating virus as its sole purpose is to spread as hard and as fast as possible, destroying everything in its way. Viruses like these have the potential to wipe out entire organizations, or cause setbacks which may be unrecoverable from. Imagine, at the click of a finger, every screen in your vicinity turns black. What is going on? The hackers have executed the malicious payload. You panic, but there's nothing you can do. They have just destroyed everything. Just like that, they're gone, and you wouldn't have had a chance. Fancy Bear are notorious for many severe attacks. However one which may be familiar to some is the attack on the World Anti-Doping Agency in 2016. This cyber attack began by the group sending fraudulent emails to the organization which when clicked on compromised login credentials, giving the attackers information needed to access the network. Once they were inside, they accessed important information on the medical records of elite athletes who participated in the Olympic Games, such as tennis stars Serena and Venus Williams and the gymnast Simone Biles. The attackers had one goal. They weren't after the money. They wanted to cause widespread controversy by revealing elite athletes taking doping substances. Although these athletes were cleared from any wrongdoing, as they were granted therapeutic use exemptions, this still caused massive controversy. It was an attempt to tarnish the reputation of clean athletes. Furthermore, the attack exposed the athletes' privacy. They revealed medical data, which is private and published to the internet without their permission for all to see. It is believed the Russian state-sponsored group did this as retaliation against the World Anti-Doping Agency, which published a damaging report on the Russian government's vast cover-up of doping during the Sochi Winter Games in 2014. Regardless of the intent, the ability for a cyber criminal group to cause such devastating effects is something worth noting, and to this day the effects are still seen within Olympic Games and other national competitive events. Hackers are breaking into businesses and government institutions at alarming rates. While this is disconcerting enough, the number of organizations affected by cyber attacks has risen exponentially in the last few years. 
been reported that more than 3,000 of the world's biggest businesses were targeted in one year alone. With an increase in high-profile hacking incidents comes an increase in public awareness. And that means demand for information on how these hacks occur and what can be done to prevent them will only continue to rise. For now. The Russian-backed cyber group Fancy Bear or APT28 has been laying low. After receiving an unprecedented amount of attention in 2016, APT28 has continued to mount operations during 2017 and 2018. However, the group's activities since the beginning of 2017 have again become more covert and appear to be mainly motivated by intelligence gathering. Intelligence suggests that Fancy Bear have been using new advanced tactics to deliver a dangerous computer virus called the Graphite Malware as recently as last month. Who knows what plans they might have, or what organizations they have infiltrated. They wait in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to unleash devastating attacks. These groups have free reign as they are almost untargetable, they have no punishment or repercussions. With the Ukraine-Russian conflict taking place, it would be unreasonable to think they have something big planned, very soon. Until then, all we can do is wait, but make sure you're ready. The world of cybercrime has become so vast that it can be hard to keep track of all the groups of hackers that are causing havoc worldwide. There are thousands of other hacking groups in existence which have caused significant damages to organizations and governments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. Picture this. It's late at night, and you're innocently chatting away on Discord. You might think you're safe behind your screen, but the truth is that your computer has been weaponized. You're completely unaware of the fact that every button you press and everything you do is being watched and collected. This is exactly what's happening right now. However, this time, it is not you that's being watched. It's the hacker. It's time to shine a light on the underground world of hackers. Welcome to the dark side of Discord. Discord viruses are a type of malicious software designed to target users on the platform. Hackers and cyber criminals use various techniques to create and distribute malware on Discord, including using fake links and inviting users to malicious servers. For those of you watching, who have joined one too many servers, you may be familiar with the barrage of message requests. Don't click these. If you happen to open one of these malicious links, or execute a file, then the virus will infect your computer stealing your sensitive information such as passwords, browsing history, and take screenshots from your computer. It can even hijack your computer to launch attacks on others or use it to mine cryptocurrency without your knowledge. Discord is growing exponentially, and so far it has 154 million active users since the beginning of 2023. With the rise of this emerging technology, hackers are quick to follow. The reasoning is simple. The origins of malware on Discord can be traced back to the introduction of Discord Nitro. For a monthly fee, Nitro allows users to send larger files and longer messages, have higher quality video streaming and much more. In the eyes of a hacker, they see a potential exploit. They see money. Because you can gift Discord Nitro gift codes, hackers can steal this and sell them for a large profit. If a hacker is able to infect even a small percentage of active users on Discord, well, the potential monetary gain is mouthwatering. It's a no-brainer that there is a lucrative opportunity for hackers. So, what's the best way to obtain a large amount of Discord Nitro gift codes? Target the hackers. A new virus called VAR has just been discovered, and it's making its rounds through Discord servers and infecting hackers across the internet. This malware uses Discord's infrastructure for the backbone of its operations and as a way to make money. It uses two publicly available tools, 
Virus and Empyrean, which are open source viruses that have the functionality of remote access control, cryptocurrency mining, information stealing, and a Discord token grabber. This sounds like a great tool for Discord hackers, as they can simply download it, customize the virus specifically to their liking, and start infecting victims. However, what the hacker doesn't realize is that the Ver malware has another hidden module. This third yet secret payload takes all of the information collected from the hacker, as well as their victims, and sends all the information back to the creators of Ver, straight to their Discord server. This slippery tactic allows the creators of Ver to steal passwords, cookies, bookmarks, and search history from their target, as well as Discord session tokens, billing information, Nitro status, the account bound phone number, and additional account information. Not only this, but the virus also embeds itself within the Windows registry, so that every time the infected computer is powered on, the virus becomes active. This allows the creators of Ver to maintain long term persistence within the hacker's machine. This gives them the ability to create impressively large botnets and siphon large quantities of Discord Nitro gift codes from hackers that are using the Ver malware. They're then able to sell the stolen Discord Nitro gift codes in underground forums and other avenues at a reduced price, which is certainly appealing to buyers who don't want to spend the full $10 a month. As payment is most likely through cryptocurrency, the hackers can discreetly cash out their illicit financial gains. It is unknown how much money these Ver malware threat actors have made. Just a quick reminder that only 4.4% of you are subscribed. If you're enjoying the video so far, show some love by liking and subscribing. It helps our channel to grow so we can keep creating videos for you to enjoy. Let us know in the comments what content you'd love to see next. Hackers have long been using Discord's infrastructure for their operations taking advantage of the platform's unique features and capabilities. One of the key advantages of using Discord is its Python module, which allows hackers to easily create and execute Python scripts without the need for the Discord app to even be installed on a victim's machine. This makes it much easier for hackers to spread malware and execute attacks without raising suspicion. Not only this, but the entire communication process on Discord is handled by the platform resulting in a safe TLS version, 1.3 ciphered communication. This means that all data sent and received on Discord is encrypted and secure, making it difficult to monitor or intercept communications. Unfortunately, this also means that there is no way of distinguishing between malicious and legitimate traffic on the platform, making it easier for hackers to operate undetected. As a result, Discord has become a popular platform for hackers to share malware, stolen data, and other illicit content. Discord serves as a file hosting service for its users. While it's a convenient feature for legitimate users to share files, hackers also take advantage of it to store their malicious files. When a user uploads a file in Discord, it's stored on the platform's content delivery network and made publicly accessible. This feature is what makes Discord appealing to hackers as by simply re-uploading malicious files, a new link is generated, which makes it difficult to trace back to them or block the malicious payload. With this capability, hackers can store and distribute malware, phishing links, and other malicious files through Discord's content delivery network. There is a growing trend of developing malware for targeting Discord, which unsurprisingly was how the Ver malware was born. Typically nicknamed a Discord Stealer, malware operators can easily take one of the thousands of repositories from GitHub, clone it, compile it, and within minutes have a functioning malware sample that they can use to infect victims. Another recently discovered Discord malware found in late 2022 was the Discord Injector. It can relay an alarming amount of information to the attacker. Not only will it share your credentials, but it can also skim your credit card information if you input it after the injector is loaded there were two executable files that were discovered. The first executable was responsible for harvesting Discord private data, leaking browser credentials and sensitive information, and injecting Discord malware into the app itself. The second executable was responsible for stealing Roblox cookies and user data. Embedded in the code of the malware is a feature that enables retrieval of the Roblox security cookie, which is used to authenticate users of the popular online gaming platform Roblox. 
This malware then forwards the stolen cookie, along with other crucial user details, such as their username, ID, thumbnail, and the amount of Robux, Roblox's in-game currency, in their account, to a Discord webhook. Furthermore, the malware attempts to perform this action across several web browsers, including Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, and Opera, in a bid to gather as much sensitive user data as possible. All of this data is sent back to the hacker's Discord server securely. One of the main reasons why hackers target Roblox users over Discord is due to the significant number of children and teenagers who use these platforms. Hackers often prey on younger users who are less aware of cybersecurity threats and are more likely to click on suspicious links or download malicious files. Roblox, in particular, has a large user base of children who may be less knowledgeable about online safety and thus are more vulnerable to phishing attacks and other tactics used by cybercriminals. It is easy to see why the combination of vulnerable young users and an easy-to-use platform with a large user base makes Roblox and Discord prime targets for hackers seeking to exploit these vulnerabilities for their malicious gain. Discord hackers are not going anywhere anytime soon. Every day new viruses are created and hackers get better at obfuscating their malware and finding exploits to infect their users. Discord's popularity and convenience have made it an attractive target for hackers looking to steal personal information and spread malware, as well as gain large illicit profits. The next time you're on Discord, make sure you're careful clicking on that random link sent to you, or accepting that suspicious random friend request. You might just end up in our video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. On a cold winter night, a notorious hacker sat in front of his computer, his mind buzzing with anticipation. He was about to embark on a daring mission that would forever change his life and the world of cybersecurity. His itinerant life combined with the knowledge gained from penetrating the networks of high-profile companies like Yahoo and Microsoft had prepared him for what was to come. Adrian Lamo, an elite hacker with a knack for uncovering vulnerabilities, had set his sights on the seemingly impenetrable fortress of the New York Times. He initiated his plan and began his offense. With every press of his keyboard and every click of his mouse, he unraveled the inner workings of their network. Lamo's heart raced with a mix of excitement and trepidation. It didn't take long for his expertise to breach the New York Times' internal computer network, like a cat slipping through an open window. He was now swimming amidst the secrets and information that lay within the media giant's network. Within the New York Times databases, Lamo discovered a treasure trove of personal information, including a repository of over 3,000 contributors to the revered op-ed page. This was the page opposite to the editorial page and featured opinion pieces written by outside contributors. All of their social security numbers, home telephone numbers, and a multitude of other personal details lay at his fingertips. Inevitably, investigations within the New York Times network unfolded. It became clear that there was a breach, and Adrian Lama wanted everyone to know that it was none other than himself. It was only until the breach was over that they uncovered the mark he left on the compromised database. An entry for Adrian Lamo had been added into the same database he hacked, which was his way of boldly proclaiming his audacious feat. His phone number, humorously disguised as 415505 hack adorned the record, serving as a calling card to his unconventional expertise in computer hacking. He also left a description under his record reciting Adrian Lamo as an expert in national security and communications intelligence. Adrian Lamo's goal was never to cause damage or leak sensitive information. Lamo was a gray hat hacker. He would break into the internal networks of global organizations but never cause damage to the systems involved. Instead, he would offer to fix the security flaws free of charge, and if the flaw wasn't fixed, he would alert the media. Unfortunately, 
During his reign during the early 2000s, the practice of gray hat hacking was not common. In August 2003, federal prosecutors issued an arrest warrant for Lamo in connection with the New York Times hack, among other intrusions. In 2004, Lamo pleaded guilty to one felony count of computer crimes against the Times, as well as Microsoft, LexisNexis, Yahoo, and WorldCom. He was sentenced to six months in jail and two years probation. He was also ordered to pay $65,000 in restitution. Little did Adrian Lamo know that his audacious hacking exploits would be nothing in comparison to the international controversy that was to come. He was at the center of one of the most significant whistleblowing incidents in modern history, one of which the ripples are still felt today. As Lamo scrolled through his inbox on AOL in May 2010, his eyes widened as he read the words before him. The sender, none other than Chelsea Manning, reached out to Lamo and claimed to have leaked a vast trove of classified documents, including a staggering 260,000 United States diplomatic cables to the infamous WikiLeaks. It was a revelation that sent shockwaves through Lamo's core. A wave of conflicting emotions crashed upon him as he contemplated the responsibility he now held. Would he turn a blind eye, or would he follow his own personal code, which had always leaned towards transparency and accountability? Well, at the age of 13, Lamo was violently mugged at a bustling train station. Despite the presence of dozens of onlookers, None of them extended a helping hand. It was as though they couldn't perceive the obvious events unfolding before them, or perhaps they couldn't justify the potential risks of intervening. This incident became a defining moment in Lamo's life. From that point forward, he could never convince himself that it was someone else's problem, or allow a situation to pass by if they felt compelled to take action. He knew from experience that all too often, no one else would act. So ultimately, Lamo made a fateful decision. Lamo reported the theft to the Department of Defense. In explaining his decision, Lamo told news publications that he was worried the classified data leak could endanger lives. He was quoted saying that he would not have turned Manning in if lives weren't in danger. Lamo's decision to alert the US government can be seen as an extension of his ethical hacking principles. By disclosing Manning's claims, he ensured the leak was identified correctly allowing the United States government to assess the potential risks, take necessary actions, and mitigate any potential harm. His personal experiences, combined with his hacking background, led Lamo to develop a unique ethical stance. Rather than exploiting vulnerabilities for personal gain or malicious intent, he sought to expose weaknesses before they could be exploited. His actions were driven by a desire to improve security measures and protect individuals and organizations from potential harm. The act of exposing Manning's actions unleashed a storm of scrutiny and criticism upon Lamo. The weight of his choice and the magnitude of the incident weighed heavily on him. In the years before the Manning fallout, Lamo reportedly suffered from crippling anxiety. After the whistleblowing incident, his condition worsened exponentially, leaving Lamo to stay in the house for days on end, fixated on his computer screen. Computer hacking had always been his vice, however to overcome this immense stress, he hacked his body. This term was used to refer to the wide variety of supplements and substances he experimented with throughout his life. His existing substance abuse problem was amplified, as well as his personal struggles. On March 14, 2018, at the age of 37, Adrian Lamo passed away in Wichita, Kansas. After spending some time on the computer and having dinner, he took something to help him relax and ease some of his pain. He went into the bedroom, laid down on his bed made from used clothes, curled up and just stopped breathing. Many speculate that his death was a conspiracy relating to his turbulent past. However, it ultimately was ruled out as an accident. Due to the intensity of his anxiety, Lamo often resorted to excessive medication. There were instances when he would use substances just to be able to join others for a meal, yet he would end up falling asleep, face down, in his food. The toxicology report revealed a significant presence of various chemicals in Lamo's bloodstream, indicating the extensive range of substances he had consumed at the time of his passing. After his death, it was discovered that the combination of substances he was abusing, mixed with the other natural supplements, were highly dangerous and could cause severe health problems.
Adrian Lamo's untimely death became a tragic chapter in his legacy, leaving behind a profound impact on the cybersecurity community and those who looked up to his ethics. His passing casts a dim light on the perplexing life he led, intertwining brilliance controversy and personal struggles. While the exact circumstances of his passing are not 100% certain, it serves as a reminder in the importance of addressing mental health challenges within the cybersecurity community and beyond. His gray hat hacking and his lifestyle gave people mixed opinions on who he was. Was he a criminal, a narc, a snitch, or an informant? Or was he the opposite, a patriot and a genius? Adrian Lamo's story is a testament to the transformative power of individuals navigating technology and national secrecy for the greater good. He contributed in shaping the ethical hacking scene as well as activism, yet his subsequent struggles increased awareness, support, and compassion for those in the cybersecurity community facing their own personal battles. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. QR codes have become an integral part of our everyday lives. They offer convenience and quick access to information, from scanning menus at restaurants to checking in at hotels. They offer a convenient way to access information and streamline user experience. But what if I told you that amidst this convenience lies a hidden threat? Join us as we delve into the world of QR code scams and explore how hackers are weaponizing this technology for illicit gain. If you want to know about the craziest QR code hacks, and even how you can prevent them, make sure to stick around until the end of the video. It might make you think twice the next time you go to scan one. I'm sure you're aware of what a QR code is, but first let's explain how they work. QR codes, short for quick response codes, are two-dimensional barcodes that store information in a matrix pattern of black and white squares. They were invented by the Japanese automotive industry in the 1990s and have since gained widespread popularity due to their ability to store large amounts of data in a compact format. QR codes contain complex features that help code scanners recognize and decode it properly. Typically, the larger squares located on the corners help with positioning and allow scanners to find the borders of the QR code. There are smaller squares within the code to assist with orientation, so scanners can read them at different angles or sides. There are also timing patterns, which are alternating dots which usually connect the larger positioning squares. The timing patterns make it easy to identify the individual data cells within a QR code and are especially useful when the code is damaged or distorted. There are a number of other features and complications that I won't go into here. However, by nature, QR codes and other data matrix codes are meant to be read by machines, not humans. From a glance, there's only a certain amount us humans can really tell. Ultimately, they can store any data that uses numbers, letters, punctuation, and symbols to communicate. Business cards, QR codes on tables in restaurants, authentication, checking into hotels, logging into websites, contactless payments, digital wine lists, you name it. Unfortunately, this means they are not safe from hackers. Hackers can create malicious QR codes which send users to fake websites that capture their personal data such as login credentials or even track their geolocation on their phone. In 2023, an anonymous woman from Singapore saw a sticker on the glass door of a bubble tea store which displayed a QR code and a message to fill out a quick survey for a free cup of milk tea. To the average person, or even a competent user of tech, this would not have raised many red flags, since this is fairly common in loyalty and rewards programs. Utilizing a QR code for its ease and efficiency, it's difficult to say this is far from uncommon. As the anonymous woman was eager for free bubble tea, she scanned the QR code on the sticker, and downloaded a third-party app onto her Android phone to complete the survey, as instructed. However, when she went to bed at night, her phone screen lit up. There was a notification. The third-party application she downloaded had just siphoned out $20,000 from her bank account. The malicious application that this woman downloaded specifically asked her to grant access to her phone's microphone and camera. She unknowingly accepted. In addition to this, 
She also allowed the application to have access to the Android Accessibility Service, which is functionality specifically designed to assist users with special needs. This allowed the malicious application to control the phone screen. It is likely that the threat actor who planted the QR code was passively monitoring her mobile banking app usage and noted down all login credentials entered after she installed the software. With full permission and control over her phone, they waited patiently. They knew when she went to bed that night. At just the right moment, they began their heist and stole her money quietly and swiftly. At the same time, yet across the other side of the world in San Francisco, citizens who had parked their car across the city started receiving traffic infringement notices on the windscreen. The infringement labeled by the city government was a fine for $60 and it incremented to $80 in 30 days or $100 in 45 days. To pay online, they simply needed to scan the QR code, which took them to the San Francisco City Government website. A sense of urgency is usually conveyed to the victim so that they may act irrationally or act without thinking. It's a very common tactic within scams. The website, which looked identical to the real website, was fraudulent. It is unknown how many people paid the fake infringement notice However, citizens of San Francisco were quick to act. A Reddit post in early May read the following. I know everyone hates getting citations in San Francisco. Scammers are getting more bold, issuing fake parking citations. For your information, parking in SF is regulated by SFMTA. It will never have a city logo on a citation. Please watch out. If you received one like this, toss it out because the QR code links to your bank account. Interestingly, the ticket seen on or before May 4th was dated in the future, May 5th, which would raise red flags. The QR code linked victims to a website which was created to look identical to the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency website. At a quick glance, no one would not be able to tell the difference. Just a quick reminder that only 4.4% of you are subscribed. If you're enjoying the video so far, show some love by liking and subscribing. It helps our channel to grow so we can keep creating videos for you to enjoy. Let us know in the comments what content you'd love to see next. Placing QR codes in physical locations to trick victims is not the only way hackers are stealing money. Hackers are bypassing phishing prevention systems and other email security tools in a genius way. Large waves of malicious emails, also known as phishing campaigns, were detected being sent to German banking customers. However, the emails were different. The emails did not contain any suspicious links, which is what email security systems scan for when performing analysis. What they did contain, though, was an image of a QR code, which, when scanned, sent users to a fraudulent online banking login page. Not only were they able to bypass security systems, but they had an additional benefit. As QR codes are usually scanned from mobile devices, they have increased effectiveness as personal mobile devices are less likely to be protected by internet security tools. In a corporate environment, this can give attackers a backdoor into exfiltrating employee information or other sensitive data. In this specific scenario, victims were prompted to enter their bank location, code, username, and PIN. Anyone who unfortunately was misled by this attack may have suffered serious financial loss. If you want to stay safe from some pretty serious repercussions, there are a few ways to minimize or prevent being hacked or scammed. There are many reputable QR code scanning apps available from official sources like Apple's App Store or Google's Play Store that regularly update their software to address security vulnerabilities. These apps may also include features like URL scanning, threat detection, and warnings for potentially harmful QR codes. Be cautious when granting permissions to any apps downloaded from a QR code. Do not allow any app permissions unless you've done your own research specifically related to the camera, microphone, or accessibility access. Apps that require excessive or unrelated permissions are most likely not your friend. From the stories earlier in the video, harm would have been prevented if these instructions were followed. Being self-aware and educated on common scams and best practices is also a must. Be cautious when scanning codes from unknown or untrusted sources, and learn to recognize signs of suspicious QR codes such as poor print quality or unusual placement. Lastly, if you encounter a QR code in a public place, visually inspect it for any signs of tampering or if another QR code was placed over the top of it. It might be a good idea to let someone know if you find one.
As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. If you clicked on this video because you're scared of getting a virus, then I've got some good news for you. What I'm about to say might surprise you or shock you. The truth is, computer viruses aren't really a big deal anymore. Well, they might be for businesses and organizations around the world, but to everyday people like you and I on our home network, they just aren't. When was the last time you bought an external antivirus software and why? The inbuilt security on Microsoft and Apple operating systems are the best they've ever been. And well, Linux is its own breed. The times of buying antivirus subscriptions and taking your virus infected computer into the local PC repair shop is a fond memory for most people. The reality is that hackers have shifted their focus entirely. It's true, there are still millions of viruses and computer vulnerabilities out there. However, the target is no longer individuals like ourselves. Before we get into the real threat of this day and age, we must take a look into the history of computer viruses. Let's take a look at the first computer virus that was ever created. It was in 1971 when the very first virus named Creeper appeared. This early virus operated on a pretty simple basis. Once it was implanted into a computer's local hard drive, it would start making copies of itself, all on its own, until the computer storage was completely used up, basically making the computer useless. And just for fun, once it did that, it would leave a message like, I'm the Creeper, catch me if you can on the screen. Luckily, removing the Creeper virus wasn't too hard because it could be reverted using a piece of software called Reaper. This was because Creeper and Reaper were both created by the same developer. It was a security test, like a way to show off the computer's weaknesses and how to fix them. However, the phase of harmless experimental viruses was short-lived. When computers started retailing to consumers around the globe, the first hackers started popping up. They were the curious minds trying to figure out how code works by taking it apart and putting it back together. Kind of like a quote from Murphy's Law, which states, if there are two or more ways to do something and one of those results in a catastrophe, then someone will do it that way. So that's really when things took a turn for the worst. We entered the era of catastrophic computer viruses. The 80s was the birth of the first serious real world virus called Brain. Unlike Creeper, Brain wasn't satisfied with just filling up hard drive space for fun. It had other plans, like hacking the boot disk, which is the key to starting up your computer. The Brain virus moved the important boot stuff to a new hiding spot, labeling it as broken in the process. Meanwhile, it attacked the boot sector. This left infected computers totally helpless, unable to start up like it should. The next computer virus which gained widespread media attention was the Morris Worm in 1988. Most organizations that were online seemed to trust one another. There were few passwords and other hoops to jump through to get connected. Everyone really wanted to get along. The creator wanted to expose the real security issues apparent, so the virus was made to expose how quickly an attack could unfold. An oversight in the code of the virus meant computers could be infected multiple times. This led to all infected computers running out of computing resources and they all began to malfunction. 10% of the entire internet at the time was impacted and the creator was the first person ever that was convicted by law relating to computer fraud and abuse. Fast forward to the 2000s era and reliable fast broadband networks changed the way malware was transmitted. No longer confined to floppy disks or company networks, malware was now able to spread very quickly via email, popular websites, or even directly over the internet. That's exactly what the love letter virus did, as users hadn't learned to be suspicious of unsolicited emails yet. An email arrived in people's inboxes all over the world with the subject line, I love you, and an email attachment named loveletterforyoutext.vbs. People unknowingly executed the attachment, which would cause infected computers to resend the email to everyone in their contact list. Thanks to the power of the internet, 
This virus went on a rampage and infected 50 million computers in less than 10 days. And that was the moment when computer viruses were the hottest thing around. Now, at the moment you're watching this, that fear just up and disappeared like it never existed. You probably have tens of thousands of spam emails in your old mailboxes, or you watch viral videos on YouTube of old historic, scary viruses executed in a sandbox. So what happened? And why is this not really a threat to us anymore? Downloading viruses from the internet is at its all-time low due to the rise of cybersecurity awareness and patching. A patch is basically the fix to an identified problem, like a software vulnerability, that can be installed on impacted computers. With the mainstream operating systems like Windows and Apple constantly improving, they began pushing out software updates regularly, in the background, while you're connected to the internet. This has resolved most known critical system vulnerabilities and made it more difficult for viruses to impact people. Since old viruses couldn't keep abusing the same vulnerabilities, they became redundant. Not only this, but companies all around the world had to keep up with the threat of cybersecurity incidents, especially when they provide online services to billions of people on the internet. So any online services that are used often are typically tested beforehand and companies will pay expert hackers to test the security of their applications before they are released to the public. With billions of people on the internet every day, most of the internet traffic from everyday people is funneled into services provided by the Goliath tech companies like YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, you get the picture. It's not like the early 2000s, when you get onto the internet to download a song you heard off the radio, on LimeWire or BearShare, which was riddled with viruses. Since most internet access is limited to these major players, the chances that users are being exposed to viruses are significantly lower. Even if someone goes to a website with suspicious advertisements or redirects, they are mainly blocked by massively popular web extensions like ad blockers or inbuilt browser security features. There is also the fact that people in general are a lot more vigilant when using the internet, with the rise of phishing and other fraud being faced daily. Since downloading and executing viruses was mostly eradicated, the only other way viruses could impact people were from old school storage devices like floppy disks or USBs and directly from a web browser. Luckily, these ways of getting infected are a thing of the past, since external storage devices are mainly only used for personal use. No one these days will pick up a storage device and plug it into their PC to share files, since they can just send files over the internet through email, Google Drive, or other applications like Discord. Although there are always risks associated with this type of file share, there are a few defense mechanisms in place. There are security features within the service that can scan and analyze malicious files. There's operating system defenses to stop unsigned applications from executing. And also there's the improvement of cybersecurity awareness. And lastly, with the rise of safer web browsers like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and now recently security-focused browsers Brave, there are a lot less security vulnerabilities that hackers can utilize to infect people browsing the internet. Although there are still zero-day vulnerabilities in these applications that can be devastating, they are often kept secret by either elite hackers or government intelligent agencies since they can use these zero-day vulnerabilities for specific use like intelligence gathering, espionage, or massive financial gain, rather than just hacking random people on the internet. With everything that's been said, computer viruses are still a threat to everyone, and you definitely do not want to get a virus. Hackers are still out to cause damage and wreak havoc, either for financial gain or for other malicious intent like phishing scams, internet fraud, identity theft, or other online harassment. The reason that computer viruses aren't as much of an issue for individuals is the reason that much more money can be made by hacking large organizations with sophisticated ransomware or by hacking the internal network of a business and stealing their database full of customer personal identifiable information. 
This is exactly what hackers have been doing. And right now, these attacks are happening multiple times a day. Yet there is not much media attention. Usually there is only media attention when an extremely large attack takes place. There are hacking organizations like Lazarus Group, Lockbit, Klopp and Revil who have stolen billions of dollars through extortion and with their ransomware operations. If you want to know about these cybercriminal gangs and organizations, I suggest you check out other videos we've posted like Scariest Hackers in the World or The Cyber Gang That Got Away. It's not just large cybercriminal gangs that are doing this, but individual rogue hackers online that are capable of causing just as much damage. Often, it's these hackers who find a vulnerability or some exposed data on the internet who will typically sell the data on cybercrime marketplaces. This data can sell for prices in the range of millions to tens of millions, depending on the severity. The data is extremely valuable since cybercriminals can do things like use the personal information stolen to open up bank accounts or cryptocurrency accounts in innocent people's names to cash out their illicit gains anonymously. Ultimately, if you don't want to get a virus, you might feel a little better after watching this video. With the rise in cybersecurity awareness and exponential rise in technology, traditional computer viruses have simply not been able to keep up. They are still a huge threat every day and due diligence needs to be taken when using the internet. However, hackers' motives are very different to what they used to be. Instead of trying to infect your device with some weird virus, they are trying to steal your sensitive data and either use it or sell it, alongside thousands of others, for millions of dollars. You might have even had your data leaked before. And that's not uncommon nowadays, since there was a recent cyber attack in Australia that impacted a third of their population. Leave a comment below if you've ever been impacted by one. And make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribing really helps our channel, so if you want to know about the most vicious cyber attacks and the most notorious hackers, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and quickly, we've got a Discord channel, so if you're interested in joining that, there's a link in the description below. Have you ever heard the saying, knowledge is power? Well, in the world of cybercrime, knowledge is source code, and the hackers behind these top 10 attacks knew that all too well. These leaks seriously shook the foundations of companies and organizations around the world and have led to some of the most successful cybersecurity attacks and even the creation of the craziest video game cheats. Join us as we delve into the most infamous source code leaks in history. 10. Ubisoft in October 2020, a week after the release of Watch Dogs Legion, a ransomware gang that goes by Egregore leaked data that it had obtained from the internal networks of Crytek and Ubisoft. The source code for this AAA game was around 560 gigabytes and reportedly contained assets like images, textures, videos, 3D models, audio and other necessities required for the compilation of the entire game. The ransomware gang Egregore mocked Ubisoft's security and said, we found source codes and free access in the main network, passwords in the document files without any protection, all the employees and developers' data and personal information, contract, game engines, and a lot of more. It is also unclear what Egregore's demands were, however, they released the source code as Ubisoft did not respond. By having access to the source code, modders were able to further optimize the game and create modifications there is currently a large community for Watch Dogs, Legion, on the largest gaming modification websites on the web. Not only this, but they were also able to bypass anti-piracy protection, so users are able to illegally download the game. It is unclear how much potential revenue was lost due to the cyber attack. 9. GoDaddy In February 2023, Web hosting giant GoDaddy says it suffered a breach where unknown attackers have stolen source code and installed malware on its servers after breaching its internal network and shared hosting environment. GoDaddy provides hosting services to over 20 million websites worldwide, yet this was a multi-year attack where attackers were able to stay undetected in GoDaddy's network for years and were linked to previous data breaches reported in March 2020 and November 2021. With this source code now in the hands of hackers, 
This means they have the ability to study it, find vulnerabilities, and potentially exploit them. This could lead to further attacks down the line. 8. Twitter Parts of Twitter's source code were recently leaked online via GitHub, but were taken down after the social media platform filed a DMCA request. The source code was reported to have been public for several months before being removed, which means it was highly likely compromised. The name of the GitHub account listing the source code was Free Speech Enthusiast. In an apparent reference to Twitter CEO Elon Musk calling himself a free speech absolutist in the past. Proprietary source code is often among Twitter's most closely held trade secret, and with it leaked online, there are risks such as revealing Twitter software's vulnerabilities. It can also give competitors an advantage by being able to see non-public internal workings and may influence or assist its competitors. 7. Microsoft Again, the Lapsus Hacking Group took responsibility over the source code leak for Microsoft's Bing, Cortana, and other projects, which was stolen from their internal Azure DevOps server. In March 2022, the gang posted a screenshot to their Telegram channel with screenshots and a link to a 37 gigabyte folder with legitimate internal source code from Microsoft. The impacts of this source code being leaked is highly debated, as Microsoft does not rely on the secrecy of code as a security measure, and viewing source code does not lead to elevation of risk. However, Microsoft reportedly sent warnings to users who searched for the source code on peer-to-peer -peer file swapping services, and also mailed legal warnings to those who have already downloaded the secret programming code. 6. Valve The source code for Valve's most prized possessions, Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, was leaked in April 2020. Although there were serious concerns from players that those games would be vulnerable to cheats and exploits, Valve released a statement saying, we have reviewed the leaked code and believe it to be a reposting of a limited Counter-Strike Global Offensive Engine Code Depot, released to partners in late 2017, and originally leaked in 2018. Regardless of this statement, a moderator on the Team Fortress 2 subreddit urged gamers to hold off playing the video games until Valve could analyze the situation and resolve any issues. There were claims that multiplayer matches were at particularly high risk from malware, as screenshots and videos circulated online purporting to show remote code execution exploits based around the leaked code. It is not certain whether the leaked source code played a role in the various cheats that are available in these competitive multiplayer games, however it is silly to assume hackers would not abuse the leaked source code to develop malicious exploits and cheats. 5. NVIDIA American Chipmaking Company NVIDIA confirmed that its network was breached as a result of a cyber attack in February 2022, enabling the hackers to gain access to sensitive data, including source code purportedly associated with its Deep Learning Supersampling DLSS technology. The hacking group Lapsus claimed responsibility for this source code leak, which is not surprising as they are responsible for many high-value attacks. The theft also included schematics and source code for drivers and firmware, and the email addresses and password hashes for 71,335 of the chipmaker's employees. One of the biggest issues NVIDIA faces with this leak is its new light hash rate, LHR cards. The graphic cards could detect if they were used for mining cryptocurrency, and if so, would half the crypto mining speed. This breach might allow attackers to crack it, which means cryptocurrency miners buying the gaming-focused GPUs will increase, causing further chaos in the market. 4. Nintendo On a Friday afternoon in July 2020, an anonymous 4chan user posted a link to several files hosted on Anonfiles, a service for people to share material without fear it'll get linked back to them. Although many users on the image board were initially suspicious, eventually users who downloaded the files realized they were sitting on something far more than a virus. The GigaLeak was used to describe the leak which contained source code for games like F-Zero and Link to the Past, a full development history of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, prototypes for Super Mario Kart and Yoshi's Island, as well as a cache of emails from Argonaut Software, co-developers of Star Fox. A direct quote from one of the developers who worked at Star Fox was quoted saying after the leak that, 
Source code represents hours, days, months, and years of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears, and is very personal to every developer. The leak had unprecedented impacts such as developers being scrutinized for their programming 30 years ago. 3. Yandex On January 27, 2023, the fourth largest search engine in the world, Yandex, reached the top headlines after a massive 44GB data leak. Yandex is the Russian equivalent of Google, and it shares many similarities with each other. The hacker posted the code repositories that allegedly contained all of the company's source code besides anti-spam rules. The source code leak included the following back-end services for Yandex search engine and indexing bot, Yandex Maps, their AI assistant Alice, and much more. The scariest part about this leak is that there is approximately a 70% match between Yandex and Google search results. It uses PageRank, similarly to Google, and that it employs lots of ex-Google employees. Many speculate it was engineered in a similar fashion. With this in mind, Users with the source code may be able to analyze how the algorithm works and use this to their advantage. It is too early to determine whether the search engine optimization SEO market will be affected by this leak. 2. Apple On February 18th, an employee at Apple published the proprietary source code of a core and fundamental component of the iPhone's operating system. The iBoot source code for iOS 9 a core part of what keeps your iPhones and iPads secure when they turn on was leaked on GitHub. iBoot essentially makes sure all software that loads on Apple's devices is secure and hasn't been tampered with. The source code leak was considered a major security issue for Apple, as hackers could dig through it and search for any vulnerabilities in iBoot. Apple had used a DMCA notice to get the GitHub page hosting the leaked code taken down, but multiple copies of the code had already spread online. Apple confirmed the authenticity of the code and pointed out that it's for a three-year-old operating system that's been replaced by iOS 11 and is in use only on a small number of devices. Although there are more than 1 billion iOS devices in the world since 2016, this means any users who may not have updated to the latest version can be seriously impacted. 1. Riot Games On February 2, 2023, it was reported that the source code for the popular online video game League of Legends and Team Fight Tactics was stolen, along with the company's Pac-Man Legacy anti-cheat platform. Luckily, they were unable to obtain the source code for Riot Vanguard, the game company's current anti-cheat software. The hackers sent a ransom email to Riot Games, asking for $10 million in exchange for the stolen data, with a deadline of 12 hours to pay the ransom. The hackers were quoted saying, we do not wish to harm your reputation or cause public disturbance. Our sole motivation is financial gain. Failure to do so will result in the hack being made public and the extent of the breach being known to more individuals. As Riot Games did not pay the ransom, the data was sold on the popular dark web forum, Breach Forums, at a starting price of US$1 million. United States dollars. The source code will most likely be used to create cheats or exploits to target the game and its players, while providing other hackers the ability to potentially create exploits that could allow remote code execution on players' devices. In other words, a disgruntled person with a lot of time and intimate knowledge of how a game works can cause a lot of problems. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments what you think source code leaks mean for the future. Join us next time as we'll be covering the most notable, vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers. Do you really think you're safe from cyber attacks? Think again. If you have to stop and think about it, well, you're not. Let us discuss what hackers don't want you to know, so you don't end up getting pwned. Stick around until the very end. I promise. If you're either a small business, a multinational corporation, the government, or just an individual, the reality is that hackers are always just around the corner. It only takes one mistake, for disastrous consequences. Cyber criminals are constantly seeking out vulnerabilities, and exploiting them for their own gain.
When an attacker finds a software or system vulnerability, this is the equivalent of hitting a jackpot. As their attack evolves, and they span further into the network, they widen their potential to take total control. Unfortunately, hackers don't always need a computer vulnerability to get what they want. The vulnerability can also be human error or ignorance, such as being tricked into clicking on a link in a suspicious email or text message. Once you enter private details such as passwords or financial information into a malicious website, well, the time is ticking. Protecting yourself online can be intimidating, as many cyber attacks are highly sophisticated and can be difficult to detect. Sometimes, they might even be impossible to prevent. Highly sophisticated hackers are capable of exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities, which is a never-seen-before attack to circumvent existing security measures and gain access to sensitive data. In any case, there are many things that cyber criminals don't want you to know. Staying aware of threats in the digital plane and taking steps to protect your online assets has never been more important. I hope I've got your attention. Hackers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. The motives, methods, and skill levels of these hackers vary drastically. Knowing the three main types of hackers is important in determining the severity of an attack and should assist you if you're ever targeted. Beginner or amateur hackers are often nicknamed script kiddies. If you are unaware of what a script kitty is, they are typically amateur hackers who use existing tools and software to launch attacks. They don't have advanced technical skills, but can still cause damage by launching attacks on vulnerable networks. Typically, they carry out their attacks using systems commonly that are bought as a service where they can launch denial of service attacks against your network and bring it offline. This is very common within online gaming. If you're a gamer, you're probably familiar with this, as these wannabe hackers threaten to boot players offline. Booting is another word used to describe these denial of service attacks. Skilled hackers with malicious intent are often characterized as black hat hackers. They are individuals who use their technical skills to gain unauthorized access to computer systems or networks. They are motivated by financial gain, personal gain, or simply to cause harm to others. In many cases, black hat hackers start their hacking journey as a script kitty, often involving their use of illegal or unethical methods to achieve their goals. Commonly, these attackers maintain long-term persistence in a victim's network or will deploy ransomware to siphon money from their victim. Lastly, the elitist of all hackers are what we call state-sponsored hackers or advanced persistent threats, APTs. Governments may have hackers within a unit in the military with expert technical knowledge to gain confidential information from other countries. They may also be tasked with cyber warfare deploying wiper viruses to destroy entire networks and organizations. APT's movements and online activity are always being hunted and analyzed by threat intelligence groups such as FireEye or CrowdStrike. However, this does not mean the cyber attacks are preventable due to their evolving sophistication. If you ever find yourself targeted by a state-sponsored hacker or an APT, then you probably know something that you shouldn't. LOL. While APTs typically go after larger business entities and governments, virtually anyone may be targeted. If an attack occurs over a long period and they go to great depth to hide the intrusion, the odds are high that an APT was involved. Cyber attacks are often associated with financial gain or personal motives, but what many people don't realize is that hackers can also be motivated by ideology or politics. Whether it's carrying out attacks to promote a particular cause or to support a political agenda, you must always be mindful that there are serious potential cyber threats out there. It could be because you have a lot of money, you have valuable, sensitive information, or your political views or ideologies go against a hacker's beliefs. There are many real scenarios of this occurring. 
This can be seen during Russia's cyber attack on the Democratic National Committee in the lead up to the 2016 United States presidential election. Or the joint cyber attack against Iran's nuclear program carried out by United States and Israel. Even terrorist groups like ISIS hacking social media accounts and websites to promote their extremist agenda, as well as attacks against high-profile targets like Sony, the FBI, and the CIA by notorious hacktivist group LulzSec. In recent times, hackers who were protesting against Russia during the Ukraine-Russian conflict have been seen altering popular software. The hackers input code into the application that checks to see if the user's computer is tied to a Russian internet address. If they were, the code would wipe all files from any systems that visited from a Russian or Belarusian internet address. This was met with backlash, as hackers can fight to push their own political agenda in software that is completely unrelated to this conflict and removes the trust in open source applications. Hackers are capable of pushing agendas and ideologies to hundreds of millions of people. It is unreasonable to think that hackers haven't had an impact on major historical events and these are only going to get more sophisticated and influential. Hackers can use a variety of tactics to gain access to your personal information, including phishing attacks, malware, SIM swapping and social engineering. By following a few simple best practices, you can keep your data safe. By understanding hackers' motives, you can reduce your risk of being targeted. One of the most common ways you can be compromised is from password reuse. This is a major security risk, as it makes it easy for hackers to gain access to multiple accounts. Many people use the same email address or username across multiple accounts. Attackers can use tactics such as password spraying to quickly obtain access over multiple of your online accounts. Password managers make it easy to manage your online accounts with unique and secure passwords. This should be your number one priority when protecting your digital footprint. Ensure your devices are guarded with antivirus software, as this software is designed to protect your computer from executing dangerous malware. Antivirus software scans files and compares them to a database of known malware signatures, quarantining or deleting the files upon downloading or execution. It is also capable of analyzing files for common patterns apparent within malicious software, which is crucial to stop newer malware that's not yet identified. Please, back up your data. Regularly back up your important data to a secure, off-site location to prevent loss in case of a cyber attack, like ransomware. If you have backed up your data, then getting infected with ransomware is not the end of the world. Although any sensitive data may now be compromised, if you are quick to act, you may still have time to change your passwords and lock down any bank or cryptocurrency accounts. Never act out of urgency when you receive any suspicious texts or emails. Commonly, attacks will insinuate fear or provoke an emergency situation like claiming unusual activity on your account or spoofing a message from your bank to approve a large transaction. Once you put information into a hacker-controlled website, you are in trouble. However sometimes, just clicking the link is enough to infect your device. These attacks, called drive-by attacks, are when malicious scripts on websites are able to download and install viruses on a user device without explicit permission from the user or them even knowing. In any case, by being aware of the different types of hackers, their motivations, as well as the various tactics and techniques they use, you can better protect yourself online. Hackers are always finding new ways to achieve their goals, and they are here to stay. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable, vicious cybersecurity attacks, and the most notorious hackers. Have you ever had that gut-wrenching feeling when you realize your computer has been infected with a virus? 
It's one of the scariest things that can happen in today's digital world. But have you ever wondered just how bad it can get? In this video, we're going to explore the scariest computer viruses ever discovered. We'll dive into the stories behind these digital nightmares and see how they wreaked havoc on unsuspecting victims. If you're a tech or cybersecurity enthusiast, you may be fascinated by the dark side of computing. So let's explore some of these spine-chilling tales. Make sure you stick around until the very end to hear about the scariest viruses from this decade. Oh, and you might want to check your antivirus software while you're at it, just in case. Let's start with one of the most infamous viruses of all time, Code Red. This virus was specifically a worm, first appearing in 2001 and quickly became a global menace. Code Red targeted servers running Microsoft's Internet Information Services, IIS for short software, which powered a large percentage of websites at the time. The worm exploited a vulnerability in IIS, allowing it to spread from one server to another without any user interaction. The virus would infect web pages with the message, Hello, welcome to worm.com, hacked by Chinese. Although there was not enough conclusive evidence to prove it was from China, it was instead believed to originate from the Philippines. This was the same origin as the VBS or I Love You worm, which caused tens of billions of dollars in damages. Anyway, what made Code Red truly terrifying was its ability to launch a coordinated attack on a specific target. On days 1 to 19 of each month, Code Red scanned the internet, looking for other vulnerable computers to infect. From the 19th onwards, the virus would launch a distributed denial of service DDoS attack on various websites, notably the White House. The attack was designed to overwhelm the website's servers with traffic, effectively shutting it down. This worm created an impressively large interconnected web of malware-infected servers, which meant it could take any website or organization offline. A few weeks later, a new variant of the worm called Code Red 2 appeared, which was even more virulent and harder to stop. Even Microsoft themselves were unable to apply the patch for this virus, which meant they were vulnerable and were also a victim. In any case, these viruses are ancient. So, let's fast forward to recent times as these are the scariest viruses that might even impact you. In 2017, a highly destructive malware called NotPetya began spreading rapidly around the world, causing widespread damage to businesses and organizations. NotPetya was a variant of the Petya ransomware, but it was much more dangerous and destructive. It exploited a vulnerability in Windows to spread across networks, fast. Not only this, but it also used powerful encryption to lock up victims' files and demand a ransom in exchange for the decryption key. This sounds like a typical ransomware attack, However, this was not the case. NotPetya was designed to cause maximum damage and disruption, rather than to generate profits for the attackers. It destroyed the master boot record of infected computers, making them unable to start, and it caused significant financial losses for many organizations. The attackers behind this horrific virus were not after money. They wanted to cause as much destruction as possible. If you want to learn more about the origins of the Nodpetya virus, I suggest you check out the Greatest Hackers of All Time video on the Hacker Gallery YouTube channel. The Russian hackers behind this attack are so crazy, they needed their own video. In 2020, one of the scariest cyber attacks in history was discovered, and it sent shockwaves through the corporate world. Known as the SolarWinds hack, the attack targeted the IT management software company, SolarWinds, which provides products to many of the world's largest corporations and government agencies. The attackers infiltrated SolarWinds software development pipeline, injecting malicious code into updates for the company's Orion product. This type of attack is called a supply chain attack. It's when a hacker infiltrates a system by targeting an outside partner or provider who has access to their systems and data. This allowed the attackers to gain access to the networks of SolarWinds customers many of whom were high-value targets like government agencies and Fortune 500 companies. What made this attack frightening is that the attackers specifically targeted cybersecurity incident response firm FireEye, 
The attackers stole proprietary software tools, such as their offensive security tools, that they used to test their customer security and find vulnerabilities. Offensive cyber tools in the hands of cyber criminals have, well, serious implications. The use of stolen offensive cyber tools enables nation-state-sponsored hackers to evolve, cover their tracks, and be one step ahead of the game. Fast forward to 2021, and we had a new digital menace that made headlines around the world, the Log4j vulnerability. Although it's not a virus, it's worth mentioning as it's similar and is one of the scariest exploits ever. Its name, Log4Shell, is a remote code execution vulnerability which affects a popular piece of software used in many Java-based applications, and it has been dubbed as one of the worst security flaws ever discovered. Log4Shell was stupidly simple to execute. Players in the video game Minecraft were initially using it to hack their friends' servers. For the few hours after its discovery, it was known primarily as a super easy way to wreck other players' Minecraft servers. Unbeknownst to all, this was actually one of the worst security flaws in the history of information technology. Someone discovered that Log4J wasn't just a wild Minecraft-only exploit, but in fact, an enormous security flaw present in hundreds of millions of devices and servers across the internet. Log4Shell was also a zero-day vulnerability, which meant that attackers could exploit it even before the software vendors have had a chance to release a patch. This makes it especially dangerous, as hackers can launch attacks on millions of systems around the world within hours of the vulnerability being discovered. One of the scariest things about Log4Shell was how many computers were actually impacted. The software library was used by many high-profile companies, including Adobe, Google, and Apple, to name a few. Because it's often deeply embedded in many products, it can be difficult to find and fix all instances of the vulnerability. There are many vulnerable systems in the wild that can still be impacted by the Log4J vulnerability. And honestly, it's likely there will be repercussions for years to come. You're probably wondering, where is the ransomware? Well, don't fret, we've saved the best for last. The Klopp ransomware family. This virus was first observed in February 2019, and to this date is one of the scariest viruses ever in the cyber landscape. The operators, codenamed TA505, have been driving this ransomware across aerospace, finance, logistics, healthcare, and technology industries around the globe since 2014. This CLOP ransomware virus can disable Windows built-in security safeguards, including Windows Defender and Microsoft Security Essentials, along with over 600 other processes that might serve to stop it. It exploits a block cipher named Advanced Encryption Standard, AES, to encrypt all files and attaches a CLOP file extension. This prevents victims from accessing personal data and even leaves a nice readme text file for the unfortunate victims. After a long period of inactivity on their Darknet website, the Klopp ransomware gang states they are back. They claim to be behind multiple zero-day vulnerability attacks and deployed their infamous Klopp virus to steal data from 130 companies as recent as February 10, 2023. Cybersecurity attacks are happening every day. However, every once in a while, there is a new, advanced, mutated computer virus which puts the rest to shame. As technology continues to advance, the threat of cyber attacks is only going to increase. It's essential that you, who is watching, protect yourselves and your networks. The future holds both promise and peril as new technologies and innovations bring new opportunities for attackers and defenders alike. Whether we're dealing with advanced persistent threats, state-sponsored hackers, or the scariest computer virus ever, the only certainty is that the threat of cyber attacks and computer viruses aren't going away anytime soon. So please, stay safe out there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers.
There are some crazy things happening out in the wild west of the internet every minute of the day, from the top companies of the world being hacked, to new dangerous cyber criminal groups being created. These extremely dangerous but intelligent groups create their own viruses that exploit vulnerabilities in applications or programs. From here, they can detonate viruses on your computer without you even knowing. The purpose of these attacks, for it be for financial gain, to gather information about you or to cause suffering may be unknown, however, what if a computer virus could kill you? Computer viruses used to be exactly what you thought they were. Some malicious code on a computer, that if executed, can infect the computer and linger there forever. They might remain this way, however, attackers can utilize the advancement of technology to deliver these viruses in ways that may impact you, not only mentally and financially, but physically. With the rise of technology, computers are everywhere. There are computers in your smart TV, fridge, or even within electric vehicles, scooters, or bikes. If a cyber criminal had access to your vehicle and were able to obtain full control of it, then just imagine what sort of, cough, accidents could happen. In August 2008, Spanish airline company Spanair had flight 5022, which was carrying 172 people, crashed tragically after takeoff. An internal report discovered that the central computer system used to monitor technical problems in the aircraft was infected with malware. A 12,000-page accident summary report explains that the Spanair central computer was Trojan infected and therefore, failed to trigger an alarm which would have grounded the plane. The computer virus was never identified as to how it got there. Blaster, also known as Lovson, Lovson, or MS Blast, was a computer worm that spread on computers running operating systems Windows XP and Windows 2000 during August 2003. This was especially bad as the malware induced problems in real-life systems unprecedented in their severity. The network congestion caused by Slammer dramatically slowed down the network traffic of the entire internet. One of the world's largest automatic teller machine networks crashed and remained inoperative over the whole weekend. Many international airports reported that their air traffic control systems slowed down. Emergency phone systems were reported to have problems in different parts of the USA. If this wasn't enough to convince you that a virus could kill you, then no it was also reported that Windows-based life support machines had been seen infected with Slammer and Blaster. It even managed to enter the internal network of the Davis Best nuclear power plant in Ohio, taking down the computer monitoring the state of the nuclear reactor. A life support machine that's infected with malware is scary enough, however, the repercussions of a nuclear reactor being infected with malware is relatable to nuclear war, and may be the demise of society itself. In 2009, Professor Mark Gasson at Reading University, injected a virus-infected RFID chip into his hand, which made him the first human infected with a computer virus. Although this is a bit of a stretch as there was no real malicious intent, it can be seen how with the rise of technology in everyday life, this is something that will 100% occur. Elon Musk's company Neuralink, founded in 2016, aims to develop a device that, after being implanted in a human brain, would allow a computer to translate a person's thoughts into action. He wants not only to treat brain diseases and disorders but cure them. Unfortunately, wireless technology is not safe from cyber attacks. There are many vulnerabilities that can arise in wireless technology and Neuralink will no doubt be a major target. If an attacker was able to infect a computer chip embedded inside a human brain, to then send electrical signals through the brain then, well, you guessed it, they could probably kill you. A type of attack used by hackers is to replicate specific signals and these can be used to replay them. An example of this is where an attack replicates the radio signals sent by your doorbell, and by remotely replaying them, they can input commands to remotely activate your doorbell. If an attacker was to replicate the same signals that occur in the brain during events like a stroke or a heart attack, then a cyber criminal could literally kill you. Death Note Anyone It's possible that one day a computer virus may be used to physically harm humanity, however, for now this isn't on many people's mind. 
Unfortunately, the virus does not always need to be the killer. In November 2020, two men from the United States caused havoc across Los Angeles by hacking into Amazon's Ring Home security cameras and then swatting them. If you're unaware of what swatting is, it is when an attacker calls the police and reports a fake emergency to their victim's residence. They typically report a hostage situation, gunfire, or other acts of extreme violence with the goal of diverting heavily armed police resources to the unsuspecting victim's residence. After the two men called authorities, they would live stream the home security footage online on social media whilst taunting the police upon arrival. The two men nicknamed Aspartame and Chum Lull hacked into dozens of different victims across the country after compromising their email account and finding which people had an associated Amazon Ring account. This swatting spree was reported to continue into the following year. Thankfully, these hackers were arrested in December 2021, charged with conspiracy to intentionally access computers without authorization. If convicted on the conspiracy charge, both defendants would face a statutory maximum penalty of five years in federal prison. The charge of intentionally accessing, without authorization, a computer, carries a maximum possible sentence of five years. However, this is a small price to pay if a life was taken. The scariest part about this is that it could happen to anyone at any given time. It might happen to you. With one phone call, your house is surrounded. Helicopters circle your house and heavily armed police are ready to breach your door. These attacks are dangerous and can end in tragedy. In June 2021, an 18-year-old serial swatter from the United States was sentenced to five years in prison for his role in a fraudulent swatting attack that led to the death of a 60-year-old man. In regard to the recent Amazon ring hack and swatting attacks, it's important to understand how the attack occurred. The email accounts belonging to the victims of these recent swatting attacks were compromised, most likely due to them recycling the same password across the internet. Amazon ring confirmed this and said it learned malicious actors use stolen customer email credentials obtained from external services to access other accounts. They took immediate steps to help those customers secure their Ring accounts. However, this just shows that once the password is leaked, attackers can jump from one account to the other and cause total mayhem. In the victim's case, the help did not come soon enough. Another thing to note, is that attacks are not always financially motivated. In this case, the attackers wanted to see their victim suffer as they live-streamed the raid of their victim's house to social media for anyone to see. Although, this attack could have been prevented. The victims, and I strongly recommend you that's watching, should consider using password managers to prevent the reuse of passwords. Password managers are applications on your phone and computer that are designed to store and manage online credentials. It generates strong, customizable passwords, which are stored in an encrypted database and locked behind a master password. Only you know the master password, which will not be shared with anyone. Although recently, a major password manager was compromised, which we will cover in a further video. With the rapid advancement of technology in recent years, it has become increasingly possible for malicious actors to find ways to cause havoc and destruction through digital means. From ransomware to botnets, computer viruses are one of the most common and devastating forms of cyber attack with the potential to destroy both data and even lives if they're powerful enough. Unfortunately, these threats aren't limited solely to computers. Smart home appliances such as refrigerators, microwaves, and security systems are becoming increasingly connected with each other through wireless networks. This means they can be accessed remotely by hackers, who may use them to control devices or commit other malicious acts. The possibilities for cyber criminals in this area are almost limitless and pose serious risks for both personal safety and financial security. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable vicious cybersecurity attacks and the most notorious hackers.
Do you ever wonder where cyber attacks originate from? I'm sure if you check one of your old email accounts, you will notice the thousands of spam emails. It's the same as when you hear of a major cyber attack on the news. I'm sure the question has come across your mind. Who is sending me these emails? Who is capable of bringing down government networks? These cyber attacks are a lot more sophisticated than you may think. These are not just cyber criminals, they are cyber gangs. Roughly four out of five cyber attacks originate from organized crime. Some of these groups have even amassed a large following online, in cybercriminal forums, like raid forums, or even on generic social media, like Twitter. You may have heard of a notorious cybercriminal group, named Lizard Squad, who brought down the PlayStation Network, and, Xbox Live, on Christmas Day in 2014. These attackers loved the attention, and would typically, broadcast their Twitter handle during their attacks, where their tens of thousands of followers were awaiting their next move. Or similarly, LulzSec, who claimed responsibility for several high-profile attacks, including taking the CIA website offline. However, although dangerous, these groups are not what you should be afraid of. It is the cybercriminal gangs that you haven't heard of, it is the ones that have caused billions of dollars of damages to every sector of every country that you should be afraid of. So, who are they? There are many powerful cyber gangs currently in existence. Some of these groups claim to have disbanded due to arrests of their core members, however, with one group in particular, intelligence appears to show recent activity. The group are evil, also known as Sodonokibi, is a Russian cyber criminal gang who expertise in ransomware as a service. If you are unfamiliar with what ransomware as a service is, then, let us explain. It's a business model, used by cyber gangs which involves selling computer viruses, specifically ransomware, to buyers, or affiliates. These affiliates, who work on their own, or in groups, will infect organizations and companies with the virus, which is controlled by the ransomware operators. Once the cyber criminals have infected the network with the ransomware virus and encrypted all of their important data and files, a countdown timer will begin. All of the stolen company information will be published by the operators once the given amount of time has elapsed. To stop this, the company will need to pay the ransom, which is then split between the ransomware operators and the affiliates. This criminal business model allows the group to attack many high-profile targets and organizations, very frequently. Unfortunately, in 2022, after six months of inactivity, following the raid by Russian authorities, the ransomware group seems to have resumed operation. Suspicions of their return were further reinforced when the ransomware crew site relaunched on the dark web. It appears since the arrests, these cyber criminals have been freed and back in business. Russian ransomware groups have close informal links to Russian security agencies, such as the Federal Security Service, FSB, the Russian Internal Security Agency. These links provide Russian cybercrime groups a degree of immunity to mount operations, under the strict understanding that their targets must lie outside Russia. In October 2022, our evil came out in full force by executing one of the biggest cyber attacks in Australian history. 9.7 million customers of Australia's largest medical insurer, Medibank, were impacted due to the Arrival ransomware attack. They demanded 10 million United States dollars. The ransom was never paid, and the impacts are still rippling through Australia. Due to the population of Australia being around 25 million, roughly a third of the country's citizens were impacted. If you haven't heard of our evil, then you definitely haven't heard of Lapsus. They are a new, prolific cyber criminal gang that have emerged in recent years. Although they have only been around since 2021, they have already hacked some of the world's biggest organizations. Codenamed Dev0537 by Microsoft, they are an international criminal gang that focus heavily on extortion. They have amassed a large following in their public telegram group, which currently has 55,000 members. 
These hackers taunt their victims by publicly posting sensitive data they've siphoned out after infection, as well as mocking their poor security practices. Although the damages caused by the criminal group are very real, Lapsus likes to make things entertaining. The main attack vector for this group is through social engineering, which is where employees are manipulated into performing actions or revealing confidential information under the guise that they are speaking with an executive or another colleague. There are many different types of social engineering, which we will cover in another video. Lapsus wreaked havoc during 2022, successfully compromising several large organizations like NVIDIA, Samsung, Microsoft, Uber, and Rockstar Games, to name a few. For gamers out there, you may be familiar with leaked video game footage, which was highly suspected to be Rockstar's new release, Grand Theft Auto 6. By using a social engineering attack, the hacker impersonated as a developer and joined the Rockstar Games Slack group. This led them to uncover 90 videos of in-game footage of the unreleased game. These videos were uploaded to the popular fan forum, GTA forums, which then spread across the internet and made international news. Unfortunately for Lapsus, the teenage hacker was arrested on Thursday, September 22, 2022, in Oxfordshire, England. It was alleged this hacker accumulated some 14 million United States dollars from the gang's criminal operations. Although this member was arrested, intelligence shows that the gang is still active and growing. Lapsus behaves erratic and unusual, which may be due to their members being young, and that they are a new, inexperienced operation. However, another group first observed in September 2019, named Lockbit, are another cybercriminal gang that you probably have never heard of. They are effective, efficient, and highly active. This gang even has their own bug bounty program, with the threat group offering rewards, ranging from $1,000 to $1 million to individuals who find exploits, personal data on potential victims, information on high-value targets, or ideas for improving the operation. This criminal gang posts their victims' information on their dark website, where they allow anyone to buy stolen data. They also offer victims the chance to pay the group to destroy the data, as well as allowing victims to pay to extend the deadline for their ransom payment date. It's safe to say, this criminal group are extremely sophisticated and heavily financially motivated. The cyber gang are evidently successful, as they have made at least $100 million in ransom demands. A lot of their victims end up paying, and they have extracted tens of millions of dollars in actual ransom payments. The newest iteration, Lockbit 3.0, allows affiliates to carry out multiple attacks, simultaneously, on large-scale systems. It has the capability to quickly spread across large networks within an organization, while maintaining persistent control. Lockbit recently made international news in December 2022 for hacking Toronto's hospital for sick children. However, the group publicly apologized and released the ransomware decryption key back to the hospital, free of charge. It is a common rule for financially motivated cyber criminal gangs to never target hospitals or other healthcare organizations. This is due to many factors, mainly due to increased pressure from international law enforcement. Maybe the hackers have some morals, too. After this attack, Lockbit announced that the affiliate, who caused this infection, was removed from their operations. The world of cybercrime has a wide variety of threats that are constantly evolving and changing, and you've probably never even heard about them. Lapsus are evil. And Lockbit 3.0 are just three examples of these ever-evolving malicious threat actors. All three employ advanced techniques to carry out their cybercrime activities and remain elusive to security researchers and law enforcement alike. These are just three notorious cybercriminal groups out of the thousands in existence. New malware developers, black hat hackers, and cybercriminal organizations are coming out of the darkness every day 
forming powerful groups that terrorize the planet. 2023 will be a massive year for cybercrime and it's important to stay aware and vigilant. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable, vicious cybersecurity attacks, and the most notorious hackers. Getting hacked is one of the worst things that can happen to you. You might get that sensation of your stomach dropping or your heart skipping a beat. You may become overwhelmed with terror, as sometimes, there is very little you can do once it's happened. If something bad happened to you in real life, your instincts may lead you to seek revenge. However, that's one of the scariest things about cyber attacks. There usually is no vengeance. The identity of highly skilled hackers may never be revealed, as they're able to use tactics to mask their entire digital footprint. Of course, hackers make mistakes sometimes too, and this has led to the arrest of many high-value targets. However, criminal cyber gangs, or specifically, advanced, persistent threats, APTs, make no mistakes. These groups, for years, have run rampant on the internet, committing thousands of crimes online, while they live a life free of fear. The main reason why these sophisticated criminal groups are immune to any sort of repercussion is the fact that they're shielded by their own government body. APTs, shockingly, are typically a unit inside the military. They have a sole purpose of performing reconnaissance against their enemies and extracting crucial economical, military, or government secrets. They can also be after financial gain, and there are many reported cyber attacks where millions of dollars have been stolen or siphoned from their victims. Russia, Iran, and China are notorious for their attacks on foreign countries where they swipe corporate secrets, attack financial institutions, and sabotage power grids. However, the most protected criminal cyber organization resides within the infamous North Korea. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea is home to Lazarus Group. Also known by other names, such as Guardians of Peace or Who is Team. You may not be familiar with their name, however, you may definitely be familiar with the cyber attack that stopped the world. The WannaCry ransomware attack infected approximately 200,000 computers in 150 countries in May 2017. The scale of this attack was so large, however, the United States Department of Justice attributed this attack to the individual Park Jean Yuk, as well as an unidentified team of expert hackers within North Korea. Five years later, and Park is still on the run. If he is residing in North Korea, under the protection of the government, it's safe to say, he will never be caught. Lazarus Group has been operating anonymously since 2009. They use various tactics, such as using false identities, proxy servers, and encrypted communication channels to hide their digital footprint. This makes it nearly impossible for investigators to trace them back to a specific location or individual. Unfortunately for Park, his identity was revealed. The personal email addresses he used were also found to be used under his fake persona, Kim Hyun Woo. The email accounts registered to his fake persona had links to IP addresses used for Lazarus Group's hacking operations. The IP address could be seen accessing malware command and control servers, also known as CNC, as well as social media accounts and hack servers that hosted malware used in the attacks. Regardless of this, the United States indictment reports these accounts were also used by multiple unknown operators. The exact number of individuals behind the Lazarus Group is unknown. Due to the sophisticated nature of their operations and the resources required to carry out their attacks, it is believed that they are a large team. They are elite in areas such as programming, network security, and cryptography. Investigations show Lazarus Group is divided into two units. The first, named Blue Noroff, also known as APT-38, 
Stardust Coal Lima, Beagle Boys, or Nickel Gladstone, is a group of approximately 1,700 members. They primarily focus on financial gain and have been targeting banks and cryptocurrency institutions across the globe. Their second unit, named Andariel, also nicknamed Silent Coal Lima, Dark Soul, Rifle, or Wassonite, are characterized by their targeting of South Korea. This unit, consisting of approximately 1,600 members, work together to find attack vectors by mapping the enemy network and analyzing vulnerabilities for their next attack. It is worth noting that they have been observed attacking other governments, infrastructure, and businesses. The capabilities of Lazarus Group are extensive, as their large team are researching constantly to find new exploits in software applications or embedded within operating systems. These exploits, nicknamed Zero Day, is when a vulnerability is discovered by attackers before the vendor or anyone has become aware of it. Because the vendors are unaware, no fix exists for the vulnerability. The fix is commonly referred to as a patch. As there is no patch, this makes attacks highly likely to succeed. In short, there are zero days remaining for the hack to be stopped. In March 2022, this group was seen exploiting a zero-day remote code execution vulnerability, which existed in the Google Chrome browser. The hackers used phishing emails to deliver messages to their targets, which included links to various websites. These websites that were controlled by the hackers contained the exploit which infected victims just by navigating to the website. These attacks, called drive-by attacks, allowed the hackers to bypass Google Chrome's system process and spread into their system. They were able to get users to navigate to their website by sending phishing emails, luring to fake websites, or compromising legitimate websites. Their sophisticated, social engineering tactics tricked victims. In this case, it allowed them to gain access to targeted systems and steal sensitive data without being detected. In another scenario, they have been observed luring victims in an ongoing spear phishing campaign, targeting the cryptocurrency sector in the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Singapore, the Netherlands, Japan, and other countries. Typically, Lazarus Group approaches their targets through social media platform, LinkedIn. They send victims a direct message to inform them of a lucrative job opening in a large company. Upon opening the attachment document, malicious payloads are delivered to their victim's device. Despite their numerous high-profile attacks, the Lazarus Group has managed to evade capture and prosecution their ability to operate in a highly covert manner, their use of advanced tools and techniques, and their connection to the North Korean government, have made it difficult for law enforcement agencies to identify and apprehend the group's members. Although, Park Jin Hyuk and two other members, John Chong Hyuk and Kim Il, are on the FBI wanted list, they remain outside of incarceration. It is unlikely that these members will ever be caught. The Lazarus Group's continued success in carrying out cyber attacks is a great reminder that organizations, as well as individuals, need to prioritize their cybersecurity. Although, anyone targeted by such an experienced cyber criminal organization may find preventing an attack to be, well, extremely challenging, to say the least. Cryptocurrency holders are a major target, as the North Korean Group, allegedly, uses the money stolen to fund ballistic missiles and weapons of mass destruction. Scary. This might sound ridiculous, as the amount of money required to fund missiles and other advanced military tech is astounding. However, do not be fooled. According to blockchain analysis company, Chainalysis, the North Korea-backed hackers stole $1.7 billion of cryptocurrency in 2022. Despite the country's struggling economy, their nuclear weapons program is accelerating. They are setting records for their ballistic missile testing, while their total exports in 2020 
totaled only $142 million worth of goods. It's not hard to see how their cryptocurrency hacking is likely a sizable chunk of the nation's economy. It is likely that in 2023, the amount stolen will be much greater. The next biggest cyber attack is always right around the corner. So, when you hear it on the news, or if you are directly impacted, don't be surprised when you hear the name. Lazarus Group. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as we'll be covering the most notable, vicious cybersecurity attacks, and the most notorious hackers.